Good afternoon and welcome to Dick Price Stadium in Norfolk, Virginia for today's broadcast on the NSU and MEAC Digital Networks as we welcome in our audience on ESPN3. Today's game features the Spartans of Norfolk State and the Bears of Morgan State. Hello everyone, I'm Ross Gordon and I'm joined by Wu Bay Gabray. What a day here for Norfolk State University football. You could not have asked for a beautiful, a more beautiful day as the sun is shining, no cloud in the sky. A brisk chill here to the day. Nice football weather here in Norfolk, Virginia as we get set for football action. So glad to have you here. Norfolk State comes in with a record now of 2-6, and 1-3 and three in conference play. Morgan State with, with a record of 1-7, 1-4 in the Mideastern Athletic Conference. Both teams coming off losses, tough losses. One both in the state of Florida as Florida A&M knocked off Morgan State last week, 24 to 12 and two weeks ago the spartans fell to bethune cookman 35 to 22 so it's tough games for both teams as they look to rebound and both look for their second conference win here today we'll take a timeout as we get set for football action we'll take a break on the MEAC digital and nsu sports networks educator at norfolk state university we see the future in you Hello, ladies and gentlemen, again, and welcome back to Norfolk State University's Dick Price Stadium as we get set for action. Norfolk State and Morgan State. Good afternoon, State Captains. Here. Welcome to a great afternoon. At Dick Price Stadium as we're excited about what's going on here today as you, I'm sure you are as well as Norfolk State has an opportunity now to pick up their second win. Both teams now looking for their second win in conference play. Ross Gordon joined by Wu Bay Gabray as we Come to action, it's Tyrone Wheatley. Tyrone Wheatley in his first year as the head coach of Morgan State. He is uh, very, very well known in the Big Ten as he was a, a star running back for the Wolverines back in the early nine, and back in the 90s. So he had some opportunities to show what he was about. Uh, very good running back. And you know offensively, he's a guy that wants to put points on the board. And for Norfolk State University, it's the head coach in Latrell Scott, Coach Scott. Really trying to do, do his best to put his stamp on the program here. And the offense has turned to what he wants it to be here now, trying to get the defense to catch up with the offense this year. So the Spartans are going to face a dual threat in quarterbacks for Morgan State. It's DeAndre Harris. He's 74 of 140 for 52% throwing over 1,000 yards, 1,011 to be exact. Six touchdowns, eight interceptions on the year. And he's also joined by DJ Golat Jr. He's 41 of 83, 422 yards, two touchdowns and four interceptions for the Bears. On the other side, it's a pair of freshmen to watch for Norfolk State as the Spartans have two of the best running backs in the conference. Young guys, Kevin Johnson on just 50 carries, has 346 yards and five touchdowns. And Raquan Smith in 34 attempts, 213 yards to go along with a score, had his first 100-yard rushing game against Bethune-Cookman. In limited action, the young man has shown that he has the ability to make some plays on the ground. Yeah, it's, he's had a great year. Both freshmen have stepped up this year, Ross, and have, have done a great job, you know, putting uh, Norfolk State fifth on rushing offense. And, again, you know, that gives, that gives more comfort for Carter to go back there with some more play actions. You know, when the running game is clicking, he can go downfield with his top-notch top receivers on the outside. Norfolk State will wear their green home jerseys with gold bottoms. Morgan State with their white tops with orange and blue bottoms coming in to today's ballgame. Norfolk State and Morgan State here on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3 and the NSU Sports Network. Again, glad to have you here with us as it's a homecoming here at Norfolk State. Ross Gordon, Wu Bay Gabray, we're excited about today's action and hopefully you are as well as the Spartans won the toss. And they deferred to the second half, so Morgan State and their offense will get things going. Trig, Francois, Tuani, and Marvin Atatusi, and Jones are your offensive linemen for the wide receivers. Cofield, Wheatley, White, Bailey are your skilled players, and your quarterback will be DJ Golot. Parker will start in the backfield for... The Bears offensively. For the Spartans defensively, Myers, Blackwell, Speller, and Thomas will be your defensive line. Harden, Chavis, and back on today. 
for the first time in a while. It's Tyree Givers Wilson. He's back and fully healthy. Coles and Savage are your cornerbacks. Price and Quinterly will be your safety. So those are your starting lineups for the Oregon State Bears offensively and your Norfolk State Spartans defensively. As we're getting set to get things going here for the Spartans, it will be Ryan Richter to get it away. Back deep to return the kick it will be Jabril Jones, a 5'9", 197-pound freshman as the kick is away, and it's going to sail out of bounds by Richter. No real wind that we can see right now. Actually, it's blowing across the field, and Richter kicks the ball out of bounds, and it will be a first down and 10 for So it'll be the first penalty of the ball game will give Morgan State the football at their own 35. As we now see, it'll be Harris. I'm starting to think Morgan State wants to. Move the ball, but it will start on the right hash. And now they'll flip the field. Again, it is Harris who will start the ball game. Harris, a 6'4", 210-pound 200 senior, will get the start. Three wide receivers in the formation as a handoff. Goes to the back, and that's Parker. Not much doing for Parker as he picks up two on first down. The interior of the line for Norfolk State there to make the stop. Myers there. Also, Tavian Blackwell on the stop for the Spartans. That makes it a second down and eight. You know, no chase. You know, Chase, uh, Josh Chase is a senior, third in rushing in the MEAC for the Bears. Got banged up in the last week's contest, not on the field as the Bears go with a, jump, a bunch set to the far side as play action pass is going to be com incomplete as Bobby Price runs through the receiver. And that's Manasseh Bailey. Bailey, the best, one of the best receivers in the conference this year, had it in his hands, but Bobby Price came through and knocked the ball away. Yes, you're right. Nacho Bailey, as they call him in Baltimore, the senior. Got nailed by Price as Price read the play all the way and knocked it out of his hands. Bailey will exit the field as well. Hopefully everything's all right with him. He leads the team in receiving. 35 receptions, 624 yards, and five touchdowns this year for Bailey. As Morgan sends three wide outs in the formation, two split to the near side, one to the far. As the ball is going to be in to the middle of the field and it's going to be complete to the tight end. Xavier Gravett, he stopped by Nyree Quinterly, but not before he picks up a first down out to the 49-yard line. A little behind the receiver, but he uh, adjusted in midair and made the catch and got the first down for the Bears. As Morgan State will send two wide receivers out to either side. It's Harris in the shotgun. Harris will keep it. Rushes left side, and Nigel Chavis is going to be there and sling him down. If they give him a credit back to the line of scrimmage, they give him credit to the line of scrimmage, but not much more than that. But a nice stop there by the middle linebacker, on Nigel Chavis, as it'll bring up second down and 10 for the Bears. A good, good tackle by Chavis as he got through the offensive line and made a tackle for loss. No gain on the play. It's Harris again in the shotgun. To his right is going to be Parker as the pass is going to be swung out into the flat, making the reception and not getting much on the play was White. If he got back to the line of scrimmage, he didn't get much more than that. They give him credit to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. It'll be a third down and 10 for the Bears. You see that up-tempo offense that Morgan is running right now, trying to confuse and speed up the Spartans on defense. Howell will check in at tailback as it's now a third down and 10 for the Bears at their own 49-yard line. Harris will check with the sideline. Two wide receivers to the far side of the field, one to the near for the Bears. The running back Howell to the right of Harris as Harris gets the snap, drops back to pass. With time looking, and the pass is going to be incomplete. Thrown in the direction of Juwan Robinson on the coverage for Dorfick State was Devin Coles, a freshman, and they'll bring up a punting situation for Morgan. Great coverage by Coles, the freshman from Holland Springs, blanketing the receiver and caused it to be incomplete. That will bring up fourth down, and we'll see the punting unit come out for the first time. And Nicholas O'Shea for the Bears. As O'Shea waits the snap, gets it, 
The kick is away. Bobby Price back deep to return the kick. He calls for a fair catch, and he'll take it at the 20-yard line, and that's where the Spartans will start this drive as Norfolk State offensively will come out, and we'll see the Spartans and Jawan Carter, the junior from Richmond, Virginia, will get the start, and he'll have freshman running back out with him in Raekwon Smith. Smith coming off a 100-yard rushing game. Lines up to the left of Carter. Three wide receivers to the far side for Pooty. Both Highland Springs mates in the backfield as Kevin Johnson also joins him in the backfield. It's going to be a handoff to Johnson. Johnson hit behind the line of scrimmage. And loses one yard on the play. It'll be second down and 11 for the Spartans. We saw both freshman running backs in the backfield. That time it went to Johnson. The speedster from Suffolk tried to read the defense that time, but wasn't able to get much on that carry. That's the Spartans now. Send two wide outs into the formation. One split to either side. Johnson stays in the backfield. Two weeks ago, he was the rookie of the week again for the Spartans as Carter play actions looking downfield. Looking, he has a man wide open. That's DK James. James makes a catch at the 30, the 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. 12 10 left to go here in quarter number one. And the Spartans get on the board. With a touchdown pass, 81 yards from Jawan Carter to D.K. James, and the Spartans lead 6-0. I would say he's back to being healthy, Ross, on that, on that play, showing his speed, great route, great hit, great patience by Carter to, to see uh, D.K. Get, finish out his route and get the touchdown. Great play by the Spartans. A flag was thrown as well. We'll see what that penalty is going to be. It might be a celebration penalty. The result of the play is a touchdown after the touchdown. A sportsman like conduct celebration, offense number 17. That is number 17's first unsportsmanlike like conduct foul of the contest. The score is good. Penalty will be assessed on the succeeding kickoff. Robert Frazier, our referee today, makes the call. Might be a little winded from the jog down. 12-10 left to go in quarter number one. We'll see Josh Nardone out to attempt the extra point to make it a seven-point ball game. The penalty will be taking on the kickoff as Nardone awaits the snap. Snap is low, but it's handled by Anderson. The kick is up, and it's good, and the Spartans lead 7-0 here with 12-10 left to go here in quarter number one. Timeout taken Media on the timeout. We'll take it with them. You're watching MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Network here Today, you're listening to NSU Football and watching NSU Football on ESPN3 and the NSU Sports Network. I messed it up, my man. Filet and the limited time 14-ounce Delmonico. That's how steak is done. Longhorn Steakhouse. You can't fake steak. Today's game starts off with a bang for the Spartans as they get on the board first. There's Juwan Carter. Officially one for one, 80 yards. And the score here on the day, the Spartans with two plays here today. And they have 80 yards of total offense. Touchdown pass for DeKendall James. That's his third reception of the year for a touchdown as Ryan Richter will kick it off from the 20. And again, for the second time today, kicks it out of bounds. Now Coach Scott talked about special teams, Ross. <laughs> how important it is for the Spartans to get something going. And now we have two out-of-bound kicks by, by Richter. And Richter. Get it. I think the ball is going to be placed somewhere near midfield. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. That ball will be placed at the 50-yard line. First down. As the ball was kicked from the 20. Normally, you get it at the 35 as they backed up 15 yards, and you add 15 yards to the 35, which it would normally be. And so the Spartans will see Morgan State with great field position to start this drive. And it is Harris back in the quarterback as the handoff. Comes through the first, second man through, and that was Howell. Howell picks up two on the play. 
to the 48 yard line of Norfolk State so Morgan State in Norfolk State territory for the first time check that that was Lavelton Williams getting the carry Williams stays in the pistol as a second down now and eight for Morgan State looking downfield is Williams the ball is going to be hung up in the air and it's going to be intercepted looking for Manasseh Bailey and for the Spartans picking it off is the Baltimore native Brandon Savage who had Bailey in coverage man to man and the Spartans get the football Media again. timeout timeout taken on the field 11:33 left to go here in quarter number one Norfolk State Gets an interception on the first play of the last drive for Morgan State. And we'll take this break on the MIAC Digital Network and the NSU Sports Network. Go. That's how steak is done. Longhorn Steakhouse. You can't fake steak. Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium as we are in the first quarter. 11.33 left to go. 7 nothing. your score. Norfolk State with the lead. As they're back out onto the field. Carter with Smith to his left in the shotgun. Three wide outs. Two to the far side. One to the near. Carter drops back the pass with time. Pass is going to be complete over the middle. McFarland, the tight end with the catch and the move. And he's on the move at the 40. Runs into a zone, man. Gets out past the 40 to the 43-yard line. And the Spartans have another first down. You know, McFarland always makes at least one great play a game, and that was it right there for today so far. Great play by McFarland. Sideline warning. Norfolk State, that is their first warning. And Coach Scott, not excited with his team there, just asking the team to get back. So Carter, two of two today, 110 yards already with 11-16 left to go here in quarter number one. As the Spartans send two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. Smith stays in the backfield to the left of Carter. And Raekwon will get the handoff, bounces it outside, keeps his feet moving, and a flag is going to be thrown right at the tackle. And it's going to be a face mask against the Bears as the initial indication. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number five. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, automatic, first down. Ian McBurrow, the 6'2", 230-pound senior, guilty of that penalty. So the Spartans into Morgan territory as the ball will be spotted at the Morgan 40-yard line with 11 minutes to go here in the first quarter. As Carter comes back to the line of scrimmage. Same formation, two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. Raquan Smith, the tailback, Rabbit, awaits the snap as Carter drops back the pass. It's going to be complete out to McElhaney. McElhaney gets it, loses it on the way down. And they're going to call it a fumble. And we're going to have a flag thrown as well. So we'll see if McElhaney was down as he was fighting for extra yardage. So we'll get an opportunity to look at that. But that play looks like it's going to be a penalty against the Spartans as well. The ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by Morgan State. After the play, personal foul, late hit, number 81, 15-yard penalty. First down. McFarlane gets hit with the penalty. The previous play is under review. And they're going to review that play to see if McElhaney was down. Couldn't see it as he didn't know whether he fell on the defender or if his knee was down on that. But they, I think, correctly called it. You give it a, you let the play go out. We saw that in the NFL game on last uh on maybe on thursday night where you just call it a fumble and then you can go back and make sure if it was a fumble that you or if it wasn't a fumble by replay and then review it we haven't had the opportunity to see it here with 10 35 left to go but it was close it looked close from our vantage point here and it looked like maybe malcolm haney might have landed on the defender yeah very close from our viewpoint not really sure if he did land on the defender or not i mean morgan of course, alert, you know, jumped on the ball as they should to try to convince the, the officials that it was a fumble. And again, the Spartans getting a lot of opportunities here uh, to see man-on-man -man 
And the Spartans have done a good job offensively, especially at the wideout position, and getting their wide receivers open. Well, that starts from that great running game for the, by those freshmen. Have an opportunity to stack the box, and they have one-on-one -on -one coverage outside. And, you know, the Spartans can, if you get one-on-one -on -one coverage with these receivers, they're going to beat you. And we'll see what they will. After further review, the ruling on the field of a fumble recovered by Morgan State is confirmed. First down. And it is confirmed. So the ball will be spotted at the 44-yard line, and the Spartans defensively back onto the field as we see a new quarterback in for Morgan State. And that's Deion Golad Jr., 6'3", 225 pound redshirt sophomore. He'll get his first action of the day as he sends two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. As again, the Spartans showing man coverage. As Golat drops back, the pass is going to be tipped up and near intercepted again. Devin Coles with the interception. And the Spartans get the second interception as that one was tipped up on the end of the line of scrimmage. I believe Chris Myers might have got his hand on it. And for the second straight time, Morgan State turns it over. The ruling on the field is an interception. First down. It will be Norfolk State football. So back-to-back -to -back turnovers, back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back turnovers. As it will be Norfolk State football with 10-28 left to go here in the second quarter. Oh, great play by, by Coles. After the tip ball, goes and gets it. Jump ball situation. And he came down with it for the interception and turnover. So the Spartans back onto the field again in good field position at the Morgan State 49. Carter with Johnson to his left. Play action. Again, looking downfield. And again, he's looking for DK James. Ball is going to be thrown. And James is going to come up with it again at the nine yard line. And the Spartans have a first down and goal as he beats Simeon Gatling again on the same play. And right now, DK James having a great game. Again, speed kills, Ross. James going down the field using that speed. So much time for Carter to sit in the pocket and look down the field. And that time he saw James on a deep post route. And again, a 40-yard pass completion. Four for four now for Juwan Carter, 162 yards. And we just hit five minutes to go here in the first corner as the handoff will go to Johnson. Johnson running left side. Johnson looking for a hole, gets taken down as he picks up about two yards. Nice play there by the inside linebacker Devin Hebron the slot linebacker as well excuse me excuse me as that was a pickup of about one on the play they bring up a second down and goal for the Spartans and again Ross those deep passes are set up by that run that the Spartans like to utilize today it's the two freshmen opening up for the outside four wideouts in the formation for the Spartans as James comes in motion as Carter drops back to pass, looking out the flat, looking for Johnson. Johnson nearly with the one-hand catch as it was thrown behind him. And it's going to be incomplete. Yeah, definitely thrown behind him. You know, he had to, Johnson had to go back and adjust. And by that time, the Morgan defender was there to knock it off. As McBurrow, the linebacker, was in coverage, came over and knocked the ball away with 9.17 left. That was the first incompletion of the day for Jawan Carter. It's going to be a third down and goal for the Spartans from the Morgan State 8-yard line. Three wide receivers to the far side as Carter drops back to pass with time. Steps up in the pocket. Now will get taken down. First man there was Dindo, the defensive lineman, and out comes the field goal unit for Norfolk State. Looks like Carter had a lane to maybe run. But he went back into the pocket to see if he had a receiver, a receiver open. By that time, it was too late. The Morgan State defensive line knocked him down. Josh Nardone will tee it up from the middle of the field. This will be a 30-yard attempt out of the hold of Stuart Anderson. The snap from Dominique Jordan. 8.40 left to go in the first quarter. The Spartans trying to take a 10-0 lead as the snap is down. The kick is up. It's high enough. It's long enough. It is up, and it is through. Nardone, 10 nothing makes it a 10-0 ball game with 8.28 left to go here in Media quarter number out. one. We'll take that timeout with them. We'll take this break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Network. Eight twenty-eight left to go here in the first quarter. Norfolk State with a 10-0 lead over Morgan State after a 30-yard field goal by Josh Nardone. He's out to kick away. 
And the ball is going to be kicked inbound. And through the end zone. Oh, no. It's going to bounce at the end zone to the one-yard line. And this is going to go out of bounds. And Morgan will have it at the 35-yard line as... Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. Ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. Coach Scott looking forward to, to get the credit as the ball bounced into the end zone. But it's where the ball goes out of bounds. Uh, it doesn't matter where it touches out of bounds. It has where it goes out of bounds. And that one goes out of bounds. Probably around the two-yard line is where the flag was thrown. And so for... The third time, the Spartans will kick the ball out of bounds to start the drive. We'll see a handoff coming from the Bears to the back. In the game, that's Williams. Williams dives for a pickup of about three on the play. Bring up a second down for Morgan. As it makes it a second down and six. As the Spartans crowd the line of scrimmage. Expecting run. So we'll see. Man coverage, Coles on Bailey. And Colefield will see Savage in the slot. Again, it'll be handoff, though. Running left side, not much doing. There for Velton Williams. He loses a yard on the play. Karan Speller there for the Spartans, and that'll bring up a third down and long for the Bears. And you know, Ross, with, with the two-quarterback situation for, the, for Morgan, you know, normally you have, you know, different styles of quarterbacks, but both of those quarterbacks at Morgan are, are pretty big quarterbacks. One at 6'3", 225, and one at 6'4", 210. As Go Golot back into the ball game. He'll have Parker to his left now in the shotgun. Three wide outs, two split to the far side, one to the near. The Spartans showing blitz. Now back out of it. As Golot will take off. Has room to run. And he steps inside, picks up the first down before he's taken down. Cole's there on the stop. He needed about six. He got eight. And out to the 49-yard line, it'll be a first down for the Bears. We talked about him in pregame, Ross, how he torched the, the Spartans last year. Got the first down with his legs that time for the Bears. Same formation as Golot claps his hands. Now looks towards the sideline for the call. Gets it. And Parker will stand to his left. And it's going to be a play action pass looking downfield again. Looking for Bailey as Coles there again. And he has two interceptions as Coles comes up with another one. Golot threw that one perfectly and Coles was ready for it for the second time today. The first one was off of Karam. This one was the same play that Savage had. And the Spartans... <laughs> get their third turnover of the first half excuse me the first quarter and still with 628 left to go the spartans will start this drive at their own 12. well it doesn't matter what quarterback is in the defensive backs for the spartans are playing lights out great coverage great awareness by coles to see the defender and the ball and get the interception they're also bad throws as uh the clock was 628 and you're looking for you're looking for the ball to be placed out a little bit further manassa bailey was step for step with both cornerbacks, but the cornerbacks did a good job of just looking for the football and came up with the interception. That's the second of the night for Coles as the handoff goes to Smith. Smith hitting the backfield. You have to credit the defensive line of Morgan State. They've made the plays here today in the run game. That's a loss of two for the Spartans. Making the stop for Morgan State was Christian Teague, the 6'4", 240-pound freshman. That's a lot of guy for a freshman. Smith stays in the backfield. The Spartans have a second down and 12. Two wide outs in the field. One split to either side. As Ellington comes in motion. As the pitch is going to go to Smith running right side. Smith breaks one tackle. Still on his feet. Near first down. Picks up the first down as he's taken down at the 25-yard line. Stop made there by Gatling for Morgan State. But a nice run there as the Spartans uh, try the outside of the defensive line. And they get the yardage for the first. Well, you talked about how the defensive line of Morgan was stuffing the run up the middle. But this time, the Spartans go outside, and Smith gets the first down using his strength and his speed on that play. It's the first first down on the ground for the Spartans today as Smith lines up to the far side of the field, Ellington to the near side. 
at the wide out position as the handoff goes to Smith. This time he tries the left side. Big hole again. Smith churning for the first down, and he picks up 11 on this play. And the Spartans with another first down here. Second in a row for Smith on the ground. Does a great job of following his blocks, Ross. This time on the near side. Goes up, makes a good cut, and gets the first down for the Spartans. Justin Smith now to the near side. Ellington to the far side is Carter. Has Raekwon Smith to his left in the shotgun, awaiting the snip, snap, and it will be again. Smith running right side, running hard, gets out to the 39-yard line, maybe the 40. They give him credit to the 40. A pickup of four on the play. So the Spartans now with a second down and six. Again, just setting up for that pass as the running game is being very effective in this first half. This is a, this be a great opportunity for a play action here for the Spartans. 4.30 left to go in quarter number one. Carter with D.K. James in the slot to the near side. Talks to his offensive line. Smith stays in the backfield. Morgan shows blitz. Blitz comes. Pass is going to be complete out to Justin Smith. Shake move. Gets a first down and more into Morgan territory. He gets tripped up as he gets to the 40-yard line again by Gatling. And Gatling making a lot of stops. But he's making a lot of stops downfield. Yeah, that's the unfortunate thing for, the, for Morgan State. His tackles are 15, 20 yards down the field. That time Smith, a little juke move, and gets open and gets the first down for the Spartans. As again, the Spartans use the same formation. It's Hewlett now in the backfield for the first time today. And Hewlett will get the handoff running left side. Not much doing there as he goes in between the tackles. Uh, ultimately picks up two yards on the play. The, Clock will stop momentarily. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 90. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Jima Dunga with the penalty. That's a second face mask on Morgan with 3.39 left to go here in the first quarter. You couldn't draw it up any better if you're Norfolk State. Probably couldn't draw it up any worse if you're Morgan. Now trailing 10-0, and the Spartans have a first down at the Morgan 22-yard line. Hewlett stays in the backfield. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far as Carter play actions. Looking downfield, has a man wide open. That's Ellington. Ellington steps inside at the five, gets taken down at the four, but it'll be enough for the first down as he beat Carl Garns in coverage at the four. The Spartans have another first down and goal. Oh, good play by Ellington. Good route. Just sat there and uh, waited for Carter. Carter had to Get it out pretty quick, and he did. Ellington is inside the five on that catch. Six completions to for Jawan Carter. Six different receivers as well with 2.59 left to go. A first down and goal. Kevin Johnson in a tailback for the Spartans. As the handoff goes to Johnson, he'll try to get to the edge, and he will get in to score, and the Spartans take a 16-10 lead for Johnson. Another touchdown for the freshman as he leads the team. That's his sixth rushing touchdown of the year. And with 2.49 left to go in the first quarter, the Spartans now lead 16 to nothing. Man, that hole was enormous. And Johnson was able to tiptoe in the end zone with an easy touchdown for the Spartans. Four-yard touchdown run for the freshman, Kevin Johnson. And Norfolk State now leading 16 to nothing. 2.49 left to go here in quarter number one as Nardone on to attempt the extra point. Out of the hold of Anderson, the kick is up, it's away, and it's up, and it is through. The Spartans now lead 17-0 over the Bears of Morgan State. And we'll keep it here with 2.49 left to go. As, again, the homecoming crowd has been treated by this Norfolk State offense here in the first quarter. Juwan Carter, you like numbers, 6 of 7, 201 yards here in the first quarter for one touchdown. On the night, Raquan Smith, 5 carries, 29 yards. Kevin Johnson, three carries, five yards, and a score. And the Spartans uh, really pouring it on here against these Morgan State Bears. Just like you said, Ross, couldn't have started any better for the Spartans. Three turnovers uh, for the Spartans on defense and a quick strike touchdown from, from Carter to James. And he's been active on the in the passing game because of that great running game that the Spartans have been able to display with those freshman running backs. And if you're DK James, don't mess up by average. You might not want to catch another one. Two catches for 120 yards here in the first quarter. Now 
over 500 yards receiving on the year with three touchdowns. 30 receptions as well as Josh Nardone gets this one away, and it will be returned at the nine-yard line. And, again, nice job there in the middle of the field by special teams ace Treshawn Smith. He makes the stop on Jordan Cofield. And the Bears will start this drive at their 23-yard line. It's probably the worst field position as the Bears have had. The ball actually stayed inbounds this time from Nordone's kick. That is the worst field position. It's 35, 35, and 50 for the first three drives here in the first quarter. 244 left. We'll see first down for the Bears as Golot hands it off. Running left side for the Bears was Parker. Parker. Picks up five on first down. He was tackled by Nigel Chavis. It'll bring up a second down and five for the Bears with 2.30 left to go in the first quarter. Spartans in their base look. Again, crowding the line of scrimmage. Let's go a lot. Hands it off again. It's Parker running left side. Not much doing this time as right there to make the stop. Tyree Givers-Wilson also... In there is Cephas Harden. They rank up a third down and five for the Bears. At quarterback, again, it's Harris. Harris sends three wideouts in the formation, two to the near side, one to the far. Your tailback will be a Howell. As Harris drops back the pass, the pass will be complete on the slant, making the reception. And getting dumped in the middle of the field for Morgan State was Wes Wolfel, but not before he picks up the first down tackle made by Bobby Price. There's a quick handoff. Goes left side. And picking up around two on first down was Howell. He gets to the 49-yard line. Stop made there by Nigel Chavis. Well, you see the, the tempo that Coach Wheatley and his offense want to to keep going, that's fast up up tempo style. Try to keep the Spartans off balance. As again, Harris in the shotgun drops back the pass with time, looking out in the flat, throws the ball, and ball. Nice job of running over to running or Parker safety. Now Quinterly. Go lot in the shotgun in the backfield is Parker waiting to snap on his third down and eight. A slint by Woolfolk was their last third down suggestion with 103 left to go here in the first quarter. Let's see if they go that way again as the pass is going to be complete into Norfolk State territory for the first down. Getting just enough for the first down for the Bears was tight in. Xavier Gravette, that's his second reception. And a first down on the best drive thus far for Morgan State since their first drive with 49 seconds remaining in quarter number one. Golot again in the shotgun to his right is Parker. Golot looks out in the middle of the field. Pass is going to be complete. And again, making the reception for the Bears is Wolfo. Another five-yard completion to the Norfolk State 36-yard line with 25 seconds to go here in the second quarter. It'll be a second down and five for the Bears. 15 seconds left to go in the first quarter. As the handoff goes left side, not much doing there again. The rush defense of the Spartans has been solid here. Today, that carry was by Williams, and that should be the last play of the first quarter as Norfolk State dominates quarter number one, outgaining Morgan That's State 201 to 46 here in quarter number one, leading Morgan State 17 to nothing. We'll take this break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Networks. What would you like the power to do? Hello and welcome back to Dick Price Stadium as we move to the second quarter. 17-0 to score. Norby State with the lead. Morgan State with the third down and five. As again, for the second time, the pass is going to be blocked and intercepted. Cephas Harden with room to run on the sideline. And he gets taken down out of bounds 
inside of the 25 at the 20 three yard line and that's the fourth interception of the first half the fourth of the day for Norfolk State the first for Cephas Harden in the second interception off a of tip pass. Ruling on the field is the interception returned by Norfolk State first down. We thank Robert Frazier for that one as the Spartans now have a first down and 10 deep in Morgan State territory at the Morgan State 23 yard line and again the offense but Morgan State with a solid drive turns it over again for the fourth time here today. That, that, yeah, that's why you practice those tip tip drills in practice. As that's the second tip ball that the Spartans were able to corral and get the interception. Great play and great field position for the Spartans now on offense. Carter with two wide receivers, one split to either side. Smith in the backfield as Morgan starts to crowd the line of scrimmage. As the pitch goes to Smith, Smith hit in the backfield, avoids one tackle, avoids two, gets to the 25 yard line for a loss of two did a lot actually yeah loss of two on that play did a lot uh just to get back to the 25 it will be a uh, second down and 12 for the spartans kennedy forces him out of bounds as the spartans have 31 yards rushing today maybe 29 after that carry Cephas Harden with a 32-yard return. That's his first interception of the year as a Spartan. See Jawan Carter drop back to pass. Pass is going to be complete to Justin Smith. Smith avoids one tackle. Stays on his feet inside the 10. And inside the 5. Still on his feet. Gets into the end zone for the score. Justin Smith makes it a 23-0 ball game with 14-18 left to go here in the second quarter. Yards after the catch, Ross. That time Smith with a variety of moves to get around defenders to get in the end zone for the Spartans. Great play by Smith. Justin Smith said to Kendall James, you got your third touchdown of the year. Let me take that lead back now by one, four touchdowns receiving for Justin Smith as Josh Nardone on to attempt the extra point to make it a 24-0 ball game with 14-18 left to go here in the second quarter. Snap is down. The kick is up. It's high enough. It is up, and it is through. Josh Nardone's been busy today. Three extra points and a field goal, and the Spartans now lead 24-0, and we have a flag thrown as well. And I think that might be in the interior of the defensive line. Maybe a penalty against the Bears. We'll see what that penalty is. The result of the play, the try is good. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 90. That is number 90's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the contest. The penalty will be enforced on the succeeding kickoff. Immediate timeout. Timeout will be taken on the field. 24-0 is your score. Norfolk State with the lead as we take this break on the MIA Digital and NSU Sports Network. Fourteen eighteen left to go here at Norfolk, Virginia. Norfolk State leading Morgan State. 24 to nothing as we return to action. Josh Nardone will kick from the 50-yard line after the penalty on Chima Dunga as this kick is high and it will be short and it will be returned by Cofield. As actually that's Manasseh Bailey with return. He gets to the 15-yard line before he swallowed up. That's a nice kick there by Nardone down the middle of the field. Uh, you know your coverage unit doesn't have much time to run as we'll take timeout. this opportunity for an injury timeout. As we have a Spartan on the field. That's Mark Brown, backup linebacker for the Spartans. On the field. With 14-14 left to go here in the second quarter. We're looking at this looking at this ball game as Norfolk State has four interceptions in the first half. Two by Devin Coles, uh, one by Cephas Harden, and one also by Brandon Savage. Two of those were tipped by the defensive line. So, again, the defensive line has been solid here in the early going. Also, uh, good coverage downfields by Coles and, and Savage as both uh, did a good job of covering Manasseh Bailey running down the field. And, again, Bailey is the guy that they needed to look out for, and today he has yet to have a reception he came in leading the team in the receptions, 35 for 624 yards and five touchdowns as Mark Brown up on his feet, favoring his left leg. 
And he'll come to the sideline with the assistance of the training staff. Here, as well as Karan Speller. As the Spartans will have, uh, again, the Bears backed up. Deep in their own territory for the second. As Golat has three interceptions today. Pushes uh, interception total up to five on the year one for Harris. That gives Harris now nine interceptions as Golat stays in the backfield as a quarterback. And not a lot of room to run there for the backs of Morgan State. But churning his legs and pushing forward for well, first down. Or near first down for Morgan State. It was a Simeon. Check that was Lavelton Williams. And he just got a nice push from the offensive line. And Williams gives the Bears a first down. Go lot back in the shotgun pistol look. Again, it's Williams. He rushes left side this time. A little bit easier room to run. Picks up nine on first down before he's taken down. Stop made there by Nairi Quindley at the 29, and Williams gets up slowly. Not only are the Morgan State Bears using a, a couple quarterbacks, they're also using a couple running backs with the absence of Josh Chase, who's third in the MIAC in rushing. So the Bears using a, a multiple multiple looks here on all, the offensive end on the, at the quarterback position and the running back spot. So Golot comes back to the line of scrimmage. Parker back in the backfield. Golot awaits the snap. Hard count as the handoff goes to Parker rushing right side. Picks up the first down as he's taken down past the 30. Five-yard line at the 37. We have a lost helmet on the play. Coming to the sideline for Norfolk State is Deshaun Dixon as he lost his helmet. But it will be a first down for Morgan State. They've gotten consecutive first downs on the ground here. As go out again. Play action this time. Looking downfield. Pass is going to be complete to Manasseh Bailey. That's his first reception. And Savage will take him down inside of Norfolk State territory at the 42-yard line. Nice timing pass there from Golot to Bailey. Really Bailey's first time you know, getting a, a good spot in that defense and getting open and getting the reception for the Bears. Split backfield now as Golot looks over the line of scrimmage. Parker, your tailback. And he'll get the handoff running left side. And he's going to get taken down nicely in the backfield. Knifing through to make the play in the backfield was Nigel Chavis for a loss of about four out to the 46-yard line of Norfolk State. 12 minutes left to go here in the second quarter. The Spartans leading 24-0. Morgan State in Norfolk State territory here trying to put points on the board for the first time today. Golot awaits the snap. Play action. Rolls right. Looking downfield. Avoids one tackle. Pass is going to be incomplete. Again, looking for Bailey. Nice job of avoiding the pressure by Norfolk State. Ricky Thomas was back in the backfield. So was Speller. And yeah, it was also great coverage again, Ross, by Savage. The Baltimore native having a great game on defense for the Spartans today. The Spartans bring their nickel package in. As Morgan sends two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. Go out in the shotgun. He'll have Parker to his right. Third down and 14 for the Bears. Driving back to passes. Go out looking over the middle of the field. Pass is going to be incomplete. And the flag is going to be thrown. And they're going to call Savage for pass interference. As the pass was... Intended for White. Might have been overthrown, but it's going to be a pass interference against Savage. Pass interference. Defense number 31. 15-yard penalty. The previous spot. Automatic. First down. So the ball will be spotted at the 31-yard line. And the Bears' drive will stay moving now after the penalty for Norfolk State. That's going to be their second penalty of the day. Check that. Should be the fourth penalty of the day. As Golot awaits the snap. Back into the backfield is Williams. As a play action, Golot looking downfield. Pass is going to be incomplete. 
intended. This time for Cofield. Cofield covered by Savage. Had an opportunity at it, but couldn't bring it in. The Spartans brought a little bit of pressure as well in the face of Golat. He couldn't really set his feet and throw the ball downfield. Well, Coach Scott talked about it at the beginning of the year about you know getting some pressures. If you're not going to get sacks, get some pressures. And that's what they did that time on Golat is he had to rush that throw, and that caused it to be overthrown. Williams in the backfield. Pistol look now for Golat. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. Golat awaits the snap. Hands it off to Williams, running left side. Williams steps inside. We're going to have a flag thrown about 20 minutes late. The play was over, but it's coming. Anyway, couldn't see it. Illegal hands to the face against Morgan State, so that will back the Bears up. And I guess it was late because maybe the illegal hands came late. Personal foul, face mask, offense, number 80. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Repeat third down. Check that. That was a face mask by Xavier Gravett, tight end. And that was a second down play, so they should repeat second down. It should be a second down now and 25 for Morgan State. And a team that's been struggling to get anything going, that's kind of a, a tough penalty there Correct, for the Bears. second down. You know, they've had, what, two or three decent drives just negated by turnovers. And here they had a decent drive again, this time negated by a penalty. So you're right, the Bears are having a tough time in this first half to get something going. Golada waits to snap as he drops back the pass with time until Tavian Blackwell comes in his face. And the pass is going to be thrown out of bounds. And we're going to have another penalty flag thrown. And that was late as well, Ross. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 19. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic, first down. They called it roughing the passer, even though it looked like Golat was going down anyway. Not sure about that one, but it'll be a first down for the Bears. At the Norfolk State 30, this has been a very interesting drive for the Bears as Williams back in at tail, back in the pistol, and he'll get the handoff running right side. Karan Speller right there. They stop him at the line of scrimmage. Not much more than that. As Speller was the first to hit him, and then the Spartans do a good job of driving him backwards. No gain there on the play. They bring up a second down and 10 for the Bears with 10.50 left to go here in this second quarter. Bears are going to stick with Golot. Haven't seen much of Harris in this first half. So Golot's going to be the man so far for the Bears to take this game into halftime, it looks like. Two wide receivers to the far side for Golot as he hands it to the back. Coming straight up the middle, there was Parker. Parker picks up around seven on second down. That'll bring up a third down and three, maybe four for the Bears. And probably four down territory with ten, 10 left to go here in the second quarter. Bailey lined up in the slot to the far side as the handoff comes to Williams and he loses a yard, maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. Not much more there as we have pushing and shoving after the play was over. But again, that'll bring up a fourth down situation. And let's see what Tyrone Wheatley, the head coach of Morgan State, decides to do as it will be a fourth down and four, and we'll see the field goal unit come out. And I think this might be at the edge of the range for Nicholas O'Shea. I saw him hit one from 41 yards going in this direction before the game started. And we'll see if he can uh, hit this one from 41 yards, right hash, for the first points of the day for the Bears. Some bad snap and not going to happen as Golot's going to get taken down by Devin Coles. As Golot had a tough time catching that one. And it'll be a turnover on downs for the Bears. And the Spartans will get the football back and still leading 24 to nothing. We'll take that time out on the field. You're watching MEAC Football on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Network. World's never gotten enough of it. 
So, we proudly bring you more of it. The new 911. Timeless machine. Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium as the Spartans get the football back, leading 24-0 over Morgan State. Carter in the shotgun again as he hands it off to Kevin Johnson. He tries the right side. Johnson slithers through the offensive line for a pickup of about three on first down, which will bring up a second down and seven. The Bears had an opportunity at points, and again, just what we've seen, miscue after miscue for Morgan State as it was a good, well, it was a bad snap. Golot had to catch it off of his right hip and he couldn't do anything with it and the Spartans keep the scoreboard empty for the Bears now a big state drop hits it off to McElhaney McElhaney with the reception gets to the 41 yard line picks up around five on the plate it'll be a second down a third down and two for Norfolk State coach Wheatley just said you know in, in the pregame we talked about how it sounded like a broken record everybody has to do their job and today the miscues have come from just mental mistakes and a lot of a lot of just bad bad plays for their offense. And I like the way the Spartans' offense is flowing today. Aaron Savage in for the first time in a couple weeks after he was injured. Good to see him back on the field. As Carter directs traffic, empty backfield. Carter sends Savage in motion with three on the play clock as Carter drops back to pass. With time, steps up in the pocket. We'll have room. Can he get to the first down marker? And he will get to it. And that's about it. That's his first rush of the day. And he picks up the first down at around the 44-yard line. And the Spartans, again, moving the chains. At that time, Carter didn't see anybody open downfield, so he tucked it, used his legs, and got the first down for the Spartans. Carter looked like he was looking for McElhaney on the slant. And the Bears had that covered and did a good job of Avoiding a hit as well. Got out of bounds with 7.31 left to go in the first half. It's going to be a first down and 10 for the Spartans. Johnson back in the backfield at tailback. And he'll get the handoff running right side this time. Big hole. Picks up the first down and more. Gets taken down out of bounds. As again, the Spartans moving the football on the ground. Nice job there by Kevin Johnson. That's his biggest rush of the day. Inside of Morgan State territory to the 40-yard line. So shifty. You just see the moves from that freshman. Huge surprise for the Spartans is he's having a great year from the freshman from Norfolk. I mean, I'm sorry, from Suffolk. That was a 15-yard run. That's his fifth carry. He has 23 yards on the day. As the Spartans have another first down, Carter drops back to pass with time again. Looking downfield, looking for McElhaney. McElhaney was spoiled and... It was late, but it was. We saw it. And it will be a first down for Norfolk State as it's going to be pass interference against Marquise Thorns. Pass interference, defense, number 26, 15-yard penalty, free spot, first down. It was a stop and go there from McElhaney, and as he stopped, Thorns didn't let him go, and it will be a first down again for the Spartans this time at the Morgan State 25-yard line with 6.48 left to go here in the second quarter. Well, it would have been six if Thorns didn't stop him, so probably a good play by him to not let them get a touchdown on that one. Carter will again have Johnson to his left, and the handoff will go to Johnson, and he runs left, trying to bounce it outside. Gets two before he's knocked down. Actually, one and a half. They give him credit to the 24-yard line. It will be a second down and nine. Now the Bears with two deep safeties. They were just keeping one in the middle of the field to start. But now they have two. And again, we'll see two deep safeties. Empty backfield for Carter. Three wide receivers to the near side. Johnson lines up in the slot to the far side. As Carter drops back to pass. Looking downfield. Looking for Johnson. And he throws it out of bounds smartly as everything was covered up on that left-hand side. And Ross, you, talk no pass All pass All pass zone. And Ross you, talk you talked about the two safeties. A great, great adjustment by Morgan to identify the fact that the Spartans were beating them down the field with their speed. They put an extra safety down there. And now, you know, as you see, Carter's having a tough time going down the field with that extra safety back there for the, for the Morgan State Bears. 
as the Spartans now have three wideouts to the near side. Carter with Johnson to his left. As Carter awaits the snap, drops back to pass with time, steps up in the pocket, looking into the hands of McElhaney. McElhaney makes the catch, and, and he'll get to the 15-yard line, and he'll have enough for the first down. Great job there by McElhaney coming back to the football, sitting down in that zone. It'll be another first down for Norfolk State. And you called it, Ross. Great, great play by McElhaney sitting in that zone. Carter saw him come back on the ball. Got just enough for the first down for the Spartans as, he, as they move the chains on this, on this nice drive the Spartans have going on right here in the second quarter. Another pickup on third down today. The Spartans, two of three on third downs. 5.30 left to go. Carter awaits the snap. Johnson gets the handoff. Bounces it inside. It's taken down by a shoulder pad as he picks up one to the 14-yard line. And again, you, you have to credit this Morgan State defensive line. They played tough here today. Uh, Smith and Johnson have done all they could to pick up yardage here today. They've had a couple big runs, 15-yard runs for both. As Johnson now seven carries, 25 yards, six carries for 27 for Smith, who checks back in at tailback. As the Spartans send three wideouts in the formation, two to the far side, one to the near. As Carter awaits the snap, Smith still in the backfield, drops back the pass, blitz coming. Carter runs away from the blitz, steps up in the pocket, looks to get to the first down mark, and he'll get to the first down and the end zone and gets pushed down out of bounds as well. But it should be a touchdown for Jawan Carter. A 14-yard touchdown scamper for the quarterback, and the Spartans now lead 30 to nothing. Well, that time Carter just used his legs and used his athletic ability. No one was open, tucked it under. And got the touchdown for the Spartans. He got right in the corner of the end zone. And Coach Scott looking for a personal foul again as well on Carl Garns. And it looked like it was way out of bounds when Carter got hit. Uh, but no flag is going to be thrown there. And we also have a huddle by the officials. No flags on the field. Not sure about what their conversation is. But it's going to be a penalty. The result of the play is a score by Norfolk State. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, Norfolk State number 15. 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the try. We'll have the try. So the Kendall James with his unsportsmanlike penalty. And so instead of the normal 20 yard penalty, PAT, it will be a 35 yard PAT, PAT attempt for Josh Nardone out of the hold of Stuart Anderson. The snap coming from Dominique Jordan with 435 left to go in the first half. Norfolk State leading 30 to nothing. Anderson gets the snap. The kick is away. It's high enough. It's driven. It's long enough. And it just sneaks through the left upright. And the Spartans now lead 31 nothing here over the Bears of Morgan State. Media timeout. Timeout will be taken on the field. The Spartans pouring it on against the Bears. 31 nothing is your score. We'll take this break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports. Welcome back to Dick Bryce Stadium as the Spartans now lead 31 nothing over Morgan State here at the Spartans homecoming. And it's been pretty good for the Spartans thus far and for Morgan State. Anything that could go wrong has here today. And the Spartans kick off again. This is going to be short and Bailey will take it. And Bailey, with a head full of steam, gives Morgan good field position as he drags tacklers out to the 44-yard line before he's taken down by a host of Spartans. And this is where the Morgan State Bears will start offensively here, trailing 31-0. Well, Ross, a lot of that is going wrong for the Bears. But one key is, you know, Bailey, as he just returned that kickoff, we haven't heard much of him on offense, haven't heard much from Rico Kennedy, the uh, number one uh he ranks number one in tackles in the MEAC as well. So you know, eliminating and, of course, Chase isn't playing a running back. So you know, we're eliminating some of those big plays from the playmakers on the Bears. Golot back out at quarterback. He has three interceptions today. 
but he's probably been better throwing the football four of ten here today he has 53 yards on today as the spartans will show man coverage as bailey comes in motion and a hand fun ball on the handoff josh bryant stops the belton williams in the backfield for a loss of two as they showed jet sweep with bailey and the ball was fumbled by williams but he fell on it and just in time picks it up for a loss of two two wide receivers to the far side now for golot golot in the pistol williams the tailback as play action for golot looking downfield he's looking for bailey bailey can't bring it in bailey out of the slot had a step on Brandon Savage, and that time that ball was thrown well. Just to tab it too far in front of Manasseh Bailey. Actually, Bailey did have a step on Savage that time. A little overthrown. Good route. Just couldn't connect, and you have to connect on those plays. if you When you're down 31 nothing. you have to connect on those one-on-one uh, -on -one battles outside. Would have been six there with 343 left to go. Now it makes it a third down and 12. And the Bears will send the three wide outs out in the formation. Two to the near side, one to the far. Parker is your running back in the backfield. He stands to the left of Golot in the shotgun. Clapping his hands as Golot looking out in the flat pass is going to be incomplete. Rashad Russell on the coverage there as the ball was in and out of the hands of Jordan Cofield. That will make it a fourth down and 12. And out comes the punting unit for Morgan State. Again, a near miss, which might have been six for Morgan State, turns into an incomplete pass on third down, and you're punting the ball away to an offense today that really hasn't been stopped. And, and, and again, the Bears have had great drives, stalled by turnovers and penalties. That time, had an opportunity to get six. They weren't able to connect, and like you said, they're going back to the Spartans offense, who's been on fire today. As the punt's going to be away, and it's going to be high, and fair caught by Justin Smith. At around the 26-yard line, and we've seen a few different uh, Spartans taking kickoffs here today. Bobby Price had the first, and that time Justin Smith there caught it at the 27-yard line. So the Spartans have three timeouts, three minutes, 34 seconds left to go in the first half, leading 31 nothing. To see if they can put more points on the board. I mean, they have, you know, they, um, you know, they have now. The Bears are playing, like you said earlier, Ross, that that high safety, the extra safety back there. So we'll see if the Spartans take some chances and go down the field with Ellington and maybe uh, Smith as the receivers on the uh, on the uh, inside and outside here. Smith, Raekwon Smith, Rabbit in the backfield with Carter. As the Spartans now have a first down and 10 as Rabbit gets a handoff in between the tackles. Not much doing there. As he's taken down immediately there by McBurrow. A pickup of about one. Clock still moving with 3.15 left to go here in the second quarter. 31 to nothing. Norfolk State with the lead and the football with the second down and nine. Ball resting at their own 28-yard line. Smith in the backfield with Carter, who has four wideouts, two split to either side. Bears show blitz. Carter steps up in the middle. Does a good job to pick up three on the play. Out past the 30 to the 32-yard line, which will bring up a third down and will say five. Again, the Bears taking away that long, deep, deep ball threat. And Carter was forced to tuck that one and run again instead of going down the field with a pass. As the Spartans will send three wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. Smith stays in the backfield with 2.30 left to go here. It's a third down and five for the Spartans. Carter awaits the snap. Hands it off to Smith, left side. He picks up the first down and more. Smith on the foot race at the 50. Smith will get to the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. Flag on the field, though, and I think it's going to be Justin Smith being hit with the hail there, being hit with the hold at around the 40. And Smith might not have let him go as he turned his back. It would have been a touchdown there for the freshman out of Richmond, but they're going to call a hold, I think, on Justin Smith, but it will be a first down as they will back it up from the 31. Offense, number three, 10-yard penalty, on the spot of the foul. Results on the first down. Ball will be spotted at the 50 as the held took place at the 40-yard line of Morgan State. 
But again, the Spartans now doing whatever they want to. Is That was a 68-yard rush for Raekwon Smith. That will be called back because of penalty. And what a luxury. You take out Ra Raekwon Smith, and now you put in Kevin Johnson, another speedster in the backfield with 217 left to go in the first down. Yeah, another freshman, too. Both of them freshmen back there, Ross. And because the Spartans have started to run the ball, now one safety in the middle of the field. Carter drops back to pass. Looking out for Smith, a back shoulder pass, and he makes the completion as the blitz was coming in his face. And good job of turning, looking for the ball by Justin Smith. It'll be a first down at the Morgan 36-yard line. Now for Carter, he's over 250 yards passing today with 10 of 12 throwing the football. Carter with Johnson to his left. Clock under two minutes to go now here in the second quarter. Carter. Play action again, looking downfield, looking for Ellington. Pass is going to be incomplete off the hands and then the feet of Ellington. Good coverage on that side by Carl Garns. It'll bring up a second down for Norfolk State. Tom Garns, he read the play. Good good way of knocking the ball out with his, with his offhand, forcing the incompletion for the Spartans. Second down and 10, ball resting on the Morgan State 36-yard line. Again, we'll see a zone look from Morgan State. Two deep safeties as Carter has Johnson to his right. Carter, play action, looking out in the middle of the field. That's McFarland. Tough catch there in traffic by the tight end. He gets to the 30, excuse me, 29-yard line before he's gang tackled. It'll be a pickup of about six on second down, maybe seven. It'll be a third down and three for the Spartans with the clock moving. 128 left to go here in the second quarter. The Spartans with all three timeouts remaining. Moving methodically down the field here. Probably four down territory is Carter. Now gets his troops lined up. Justin Smith lined up to the near side. Single safety high there for Morgan State. As Carter drops back to pass with time. Steps up in the pocket. Looking downfield. Pumps. Now stays on his feet. And he's going to get taken down at the 30-yard line. Might have had an opportunity to throw the ball down the field. And the Spartans... We'll keep the offense on the field. Clock moving with 50 seconds to go. On fourth down, it'll be a fourth down and four. McCarter did have a couple of receivers open down the field. And the Spartans. We have the fourth down and four. Clock moving with 35 seconds to go. Carter. Awaits the snap. 15 on the play clock. 29 left to go here in the second quarter. Three wide outs in the formation, two to the near side, one to the far. McFarland is going to make the – have the ball in his hands and then get the ball hit out, and we're going to have a flag thrown. And it's going to be after the play. Tough thing about that. It's after the play. We'll see if it's going to keep the ball in possession of Norfolk State. If they call it after the play, it will be Morgan State football. And that's going to be the biggest conversation after that with 22 seconds to go. If it is during the play, or if they call it in the act of the play, it will be a first down for Norfolk State. We'll hear the call. The result of the play is an incomplete pass. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, Morgan State number two. They will retain possession of the ball. 15-yard penalty, first down. And as we thought, because the the, the 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 result of the play was an incomplete pass, it will be a fourth down, the, the count down counted, and the penalty will back the football to the 15-yard line where we'll probably see Morgan State uh, take a knee here and get to the end zone, get to the, excuse me, get to the locker room and regroup as Norfolk State will have the football to start the Third quarter here as well with 22 seconds. We'll see if Morgan will just take a run and try to get to the locker room as we see Parker in the backfield. Actually, they're going to throw. Go lot looking downfield. It's going to be a completion out to Parker. Parker is going to get stopped by Coles as he runs out of bounds with 15 seconds left. A pickup of about three on the play. Chavis and Coles there to push him out of, play, of bounds. 
and Morgan trying to get some points. They're going to try to go down the field and get some points here on this last drive. Go lot. Again with Parker in the backfield. To his right, two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. Now to his left is Parker. Go lot, play action. Looking downfield. Throwing the ball in direction of Manasseh Bailey. Ball's going to be incomplete. As Bobby Price was there to make a break on the ball. We have two injured players. One for Norfolk State. That's Nairi Quinterly. Injury timeout. And one for Morgan State with eight seconds to go. Here in the second quarter. Quinterly's up. And the Bear injured player still on the ground as that pass was intended for Deontay White, it looked like. And it might be White that's on the field. He might have banged knees with Quinterly. Eight seconds to go. Make sure you join us at halftime as we have a special interview with the head coach of both the men's and women's cross-country champions of the MEAC this year, Coach Kenny Giles, as Martha Bisa led the women to the championship and the Spartan men with a great team effort comes off with the victory on the men's side here as the Spartans regain and reclaim the cross country championships they they had a, 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 a real big run on those in the early 2000s and, and in the 2010s but now as the handoff goes to Williams Williams cuts it back right side lowers his shoulder runs over Brandon Savage still on his feet as he gets taken down at the 34 yard line by Richard Russell, and that will do it for the first half. Norfolk State will take a 31-0 lead into halftime here over the Bears of Morgan State. We'll take this time out on the field. We'll take a break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Networks. The world's never gotten enough of it. So, we proudly bring you more of it. The new 911. Timeless machine. Hello and welcome back to Dick Bryce Stadium as the Spartans of Norfolk State lead to Morgan State 31 0. Ross Gordon joined by Wu Bay Gabray as it's been all Norfolk State in the first half. 360 yards of total offense for Norfolk State, 39 yards, excuse me, 124 yards of total offense for Morgan State. And they really got themselves uh, in a deep hole in the first quarter, three interceptions in the first quarter for the Bears and one in the second quarter. They have four turnovers here today, and they've all been uh, great defense by the Spartans, including two tip passes at the line of scrimmage. And then the offense for Norfolk State has clicked on all cylinders, 99 yards rushing, 261 through the air. This is probably, the, what, the most complete half that the Spartans have played so far. Like you said, Ross, the four turnovers um, attributed to to, uh, to to points as well. And, and, again, the defensive line putting pressure on both of the uh, Morgan State quarterbacks. Those two tip balls caused two turnovers. And, you know, offensively, Carter is doing what he what he wants to do. And the, rush, the running game is doing well with the, with the freshmen. So, I mean, right now, this is this is a great start for the Spartans in the first half, and hopefully they can continue in the second half. Exactly right, as we'll take this time out. And when we come back, we will have an interview that we spoke of earlier with Kenny Giles as Norfolk State University leads Morgan State here at halftime, 31 to nothing on uh, the MEAC Digital and NSU. To pull that down. Yeah. Welcome back to the Halftime Show as we continue our discussion with NSU Track and Field and Cross Country Director Kenneth Giles. And Coach, your women's uh, team won its first title in a decade. You had several all MEAC performers, Frida Koetch, Caroline Samoy, and Kara Grant earned all conference honors. But as usual, everyone in the conference was uh, again chasing Martha Bisa, who set a, a conference record with her third straight women's uh, individual championship. What is it about Martha that makes her so special? 
Martha really showed some leadership. Um, she and and not not that she hadn't showed it in the past, but she put, she carried this cross country team on her back. We we lost Asha Koich, um to a stress fracture earlier in the season. We, we the, the unknown with Kara because she had never ran cross country before. And then we you know we got the great Nelly. <laughs> we we you know we we really didn't know what to expect from Nelly because um she struggled the last couple of years and. You know, Martha came and told me, she said, Coach, I'm, I'm going to get Nelly right. And, you know, I said, Martha, this team is only going to go as far as you take us. You know, last year was kind of heartbreaking because we lost the championship on the women's side by one point. And, um, you know, this year, you know, Martha said that was not going to happen. And she, she proved right because it didn't happen. Well, Coach, your uh, men's team will be in action in a couple weeks at the Southeast Regional. The women's team, uh, distance runners, will get ready for – indoor track but realistically what kind of carryover can you expect winning titles in the fall and cross country to have for your indoor and outdoor track seasons later in the year well it, it, you know it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a positive carryover because um it you know the track the track ladies the track guys you know they see that you know we can we can win that championship this is what norfolk state track and field is all about and um i'm looking forward to be a positive carryover all right coach well two championships down uh Several more, I'm sure, still on your sites this year. We look forward to catching up with you uh, again more as the year progresses. Thanks for joining us. Okay, thank you very much. Once again, that's NSU's Director of Track and Field and Cross Country Programs, Kenneth Giles. We'll come back for the start of today's second half after this break on the NSU and MEAC Sports Digital Network. What would you like the power to do? We're back on the Halftime Show on the NSU and MEAC Sports Digital Network on Hot 91 and ESPN3. I'm Matt Mahalik, and today we have a special guest with us. Fresh off his team's two MEAC Cross Country Championships last Saturday, we're joined by NSU's Director of Track and Field and Cross Country, Kenneth Giles. Coach, how you doing? I'm doing fine, Matt. Thanks for having me on. Good to see you as always. Uh, Coach, two more championships uh, last week. Nothing new to you. Now 13 on the men's side, which is a conference record, and and, uh, your second one on the women's side as well in the last 10 years. I'm sure winning never gets old for you. Well, I tell you, you know, when you you got a a different group of student athletes that come in, you know, every four or five years, um, you know, they come here with the expectation of doing well in the classroom and doing well on the – you know, on the track and cross country course, and um, and we got a good group this year. Speaking of the group on the men's side that brought home uh, MEAC championship number thirteen, obviously a couple of senior leaders for you that did a nice job. Antenna Germa and Festus Bet, they're multiple year all conference guys for you, but you really reshaped the roster back in January when you added three new runners: Meshack Kipchurchir, who's a transfer and won the MEAC individual title a week ago; Evans Chariot as a freshman, and Lale too. Uh, what did those three do to really kind of revitalize your your cross country squad? Well, what they did, Matt, they brought Norfolk State cross country back to where it was. When you look at Evans, you look at Evans as a as an individual that was the most outstanding um, performer during the outdoor championship. Then you know Lale too; he collected our outstanding freshman during the track season. And then when you look at Meshack, Meshack comes to us, you know, from Hallstruff, where he was um, freshman of the year in the CAA, and he, he came here and, you know, was individual champion. So they, they, we really did a good job of retooling the roster to get it back to where it should be. All right, Coach, we'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about the women's title. We'll be back after this on the NSU and MEAC Sports Digital Network on Hot 91 and ESPN3. your ambitions into action. What would you like the power to do? It's the Legion, baby! Hello and welcome back to the MEAC Digital Broadcast and the NSU Sports Network Broadcast of Norfolk State University Football and MEAC Football here in Norfolk, Virginia as the Spartans of Norfolk State University came out and started off well today and they haven't stopped leading 31 nothing at the break over Morgan State Ross Gordon joined by Wu Bay Gabrain it's been a good first half for Norfolk State and uh, the Spartans have kept it going here as the game has gone along as we look at some game from around the conference in the fourth quarter North Carolina Central shutting out Howard 21 to nothing a good ball game in the third quarter leading 10 nothing South Carolina State now has seen North Carolina A&T score 19 unanswered 
They now trail the Aggies of North Carolina A&T 19 to 10 here today in the other games that are going on today later on this afternoon in about 10 minutes. Delaware State will take on unbeaten in the conference Florida and m The Rattlers coming into today 5-0 in conference, 7-1. Great year for second year head coach Willie Simmons and the FAMU Rattlers. Ross Gordon, Wu Bay, Gabre. We're about a minute away from the start of the second half. And uh, Wu Bay, if you're Norfolk State, just keep doing what you're doing as the, as the pass has worked and the and the running is starting to get his get his footing going today. Eight carries, 59 yards for Raekwon Smith. Jaquan, Jawan Carter, 11 of 15, 261 yards and two touchdowns here today. Absolutely. Keep doing what you're doing. I mean, Morgan made some adjustments to put a high safety out there. Then the running game kicked in. Then when he had to put a safety back in the box, Carter went down the field. So, um, you know, like I, I said before, I think this might be the first, I mean, the best first half that the Spartans have played, um, you know, this season. They've done a great job of eliminating, you know, turn of, of, of uh, avoiding turnovers and causing turnovers themselves on defense. So they've done a great job on both sides of the ball. And I think big things for Norfolk State defensively, they started off well. They started off consistently. They, they came out, and they did a good job of starting the football game right. Uh, again, like the film drive for Morgan was the first drive. They gave up a couple of yards, but the Spartans then uh, did a good job of buckling down. But again, after that, it's just been the pressure from the defensive line and the good coverage downfield by the secondary. Which has been the story. Well, I think I think Coach Scott is, is going to really, when he watches the film, I think he's really going to be excited about the pressure that they put on um, the Morgan State quarterbacks. Those tip balls, Ross, mean a lot to a defensive line, especially you know um, you know causing the turnovers that we got on the defensive end and the defensive back Savage in particular. The Baltimore native playing against Morgan State, uh, doing a great job on that back end playing defense. Um, linebackers are playing well with Nigel Chavis filling the gaps. Um, in, in the hole. So uh, right now, like I said, the defense is playing uh, exceptionally well. Offense is basically doing what they want to do. Carter going down the field. The receivers getting open, and, and the running running game is has kicked in a high gear with Smith and Johnson. For the first time tonight, Norfolk State will return a kickoff as Talbert will go back deep. He'll be joined back deep by Quentin Green, and you might not have noticed it, but this is this will be the Spartans' uh, first kickoff return of the day as Morgan State got the first kickoff of the day and has not scored. And this will be the first opportunity for the Spartans to return a kickoff as this kick is going to be short, and we'll see Quentin Green take it from the 15. As he kicks it, picks it up, stays on his feet, avoids the tackle, stays on his feet at the 35-yard line. He's going to be taken down at the 39-yard line. Great return there by Green as he's tackled by Wes Wolfolk, the wide receiver, but what looked like it might have been a tad bit tough start. Nice job by Green of making a play there out to the 39. It seems like whenever a receiver, or not a receiver, but a kickoff return or punt return, when they bobble the ball, it seems like it confuses the opposing team. And that time, Morgan over-pursued uh, over -pursued the ball, and uh, Green was able to go down the field and get some positive yardage on that kickoff. Carter will have Kevin Johnson in the backfield with them. Three wide receivers to the far side of the field. We'll see press coverage on the near side of the field for the Bears. As Carter will ha actually keep it, actually hand it off to Johnson. Didn't see what was going on there. Had us, had us fooled a little bit. It was a two-yard pickup there by Kevin as he rushed over the left side of the defense. And he gets to the 40-yard line. It'll be a second down and eight. Yeah, we didn't really see what was going on. It looks like Carter played the Statue of Liberty that time. Just stood straight up. Thought he still had it. Great fake by him as he fooled everyone on that play. It'll be a second down and eight for the Spartans. Two wide outs to the far side of the field. One to the near side. Williams, the tight end, lined up to the far side of the field as Carter drops back to pass. Pass is going to be complete to McElhaney, and he can't hang on to it. Time McElhaney used his size he had to shield it, the defender. And had it in his hands uh, shortly, but again, you have to credit uh, Marquis Thorns for staying with the play. Absolutely. Again, one-on-one -on -one outside, Ross. We will take our chances with our receivers on those one-on-one -on -one battles. And it looks like, again, Morgan will keep us two safeties. Actually, this might be a pressure look for the Bears. And they drop back in the coverage. Carter looks downfield. Pass is going to be incomplete looking for James. And James looking for a flag as he was covered by McBarrow. And the pass is going to fall incomplete. And that will bring up a fourth down in the punting unit. Will come out for the first time today. We'll see Ryan Richter punt the football. That's going to be a down coming up. 
James, two catches for 120 yards, had an 80 yarder to start it. That time, great coverage by the Morgan State defense. The first three and out as well for Norfolk State. As Richter awaits the snap. A good snap. Richter will get the punt away, and it's a beauty. And it'll drive Woolfolk back, and this one will bounce inside the 10. It'll take a Norfolk State bounce and die as the ball will stop at the five-yard line. Beautiful punt there by Richter, and that pins Morgan State deep in their own territory. Well, Richter's definitely a weapon. Well, that was a great play by Richter. Got a nice bounce, and like you said, the ball just died. It just stuck on the turf, and the Spartans will have, oh, excuse me, the Morgan will have terrible field position to start the third quarter. Frauds. 14.02 left to go here in the third quarter. As Morgan will come out with Golot. Today, he is 5 of 14, three interceptions today, and 58 yards throwing the football. Between the two quarterbacks, they are 7 of 19 throwing. Golot will hand it off and getting stopped near the line of scrimmage, actually picking up maybe two yards on the play was Parker. And that'll make it a second down and eight for the Bears as the ball will be spotted at the seven-yard line. And the Bears will bring out three wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. And Golat will be in the backfield by himself. Spartan showing man coverage on the outside. Golat will keep it on the quarterback keeper. Gets the line of scrimmage. Might have picked up one. As the Spartans were ready for that one. As Nigel Chavis was there, also Cephas Harden. And also in on the stop for Norfolk State was Deshaun Dixon. That'll bring up third down. Just tackled by committee. Spartans flying to the ball. On the uh, running backs of Morgan. 13 minutes to go here in the third quarter as Parker will check back in at tailback. He'll stand to the right of Golat with two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. Golat drops back to pass with time. Looks down the middle of the field. Pass is going to be knocked away. Nice job of dropping back from his middle linebacker spot by Nigel Chavis, and that'll bring up fourth down. Great play by Chavis. You know, usually we hear about him in the run pursuit. That time he dropped back in coverage and knocked the ball down, setting up a fourth down for Morgan. Top out of the field. We also have an injured Spartan on the field. It happened late. It was away from the play. And getting up slowly was Devin Coles. As he has had a solid day today. Two interceptions for the freshman from Richmond. As he's off to the sidelines. Devin Coles, he now leads the team in interceptions. He has four on the year. The freshman from out of Richmond comes to the sideline. Hopefully everything's okay with him as the punt's away, and it will be a high spiral, and we'll see Smith call for a fair catch, and he allows the ball to go out of bounds at the Morgan State 46-yard line, and that's where the Spartans will start their second drive of the third quarter with 12 20, 31 remaining in the third quarter the spartans still lead 31 nothing we'll take this break on the miac digital and nsu sports network as your life grows so do your needs and with bank of america and merrill the benefits you get can grow too as a preferred rewards member you can enjoy priority service and exclusive discounts so your growing life can be more rewarding Welcome back to Norfolk, Virginia with 12.31 left to go in the third quarter. Norfolk State leading Morgan State 31-0. The Spartans back on the field for the second time here this afternoon in the second half as Johnson moves in motion, and we're going to have a false start. And it's going to go against the Spartans as McElhaney got a... McElhaney, also Anthony Williams got a head start. Anthony Williams, the unfortunate... Uh, party there, but it looked like everyone on that right side got a head start on the snap, and it will be a 
Five yard penalty against the Spartans. It'll be first and 15. And we saw Johnson in motion, Ross. You know we were what was coming. It seems to be coming around the, the far side. Probably a, a handoff around the the outside, and he probably would have put on the Jets for that one, but it was a penalty on the play. Two wide receivers to the far side. As this time, it's a straight handoff off to Smith. Smith probes the middle, picks up around one on the play, got to midfield. To bring up a second down and 14. Leading 31 nothing. The Spartans in no rush and wants to see this clock move here as they have a 31 point lead here at home coming in the third quarter. Defense playing solid here today as North Carolina AT opens up a 25 to 10 lead. Now 25 unanswered for the Aggies. As Carter. Again in the shotgun with nine seconds on the play clock. Two wide receivers, one split to either side. One deep safety for the Bears as Carter drops back to pass. Looking for McElhaney on the slant. McElhaney had a step on his man, but the ball was thrown a tad bit too low. It'll bring up a third down for the Spartans. Definitely had a step on his man. And Carter looked like he rushed the throw a little bit. Had plenty of time in the pocket. Just missed McElhaney on the slant. I think that was just maybe not not knowing how much time he had as McElhaney had a step on Marquise Thorns and he's had one pretty much the whole day that time pass was thrown a little bit low as Carter has a third down and 14 Carter drops back the pass with time steps up looking down the field pass is going to be incomplete again looking for McElhaney on the coverage there was Garns and that'll bring up fourth down and we'll see the punting unit come out for Norfolk State great defensive uh, stop by the Bears they showed multiple looks that time uh, on defense. Maybe confused the Spartans a little bit. That was a great play by Garns. He's been all over the field for Morgan in the defensive backfield. Wolfolk will stand at his own 10-yard line to return the punt of Ryan Richter. In the direction of the corner. This one can't get out of bounds as it bounces into the end zone for the touchback and the Bears will have it at their own 20 yard line when we come back from this timeout. Norfolk State leads 31 nothing here as we take a break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, sorry. Eleven thirty-one remaining here in the third quarter. Norfolk State leading 31 nothing. Morgan State with their second opportunity with the football here in the quarter as Golat back in at quarterback he hands it off to Parker out of the backfield Parker picks up one out to the 21 yard line but that's about it again the defensive pressure beginning to weigh on the offensive line for the Bears something coach Scott would love to hear you say Ross the defensive pressure that's what they've been asking for all year and today it's clicking on all cylinders on defense as again, Golot in the shotgun drops back to pass, looking downfield and throws the ball, and it's going to be tipped. Nice job coming over from his safety position there by Nyree Quinnelly, as that one was thrown short of the intended receiver, Wolfolk. Nice coverage as well by Rashard Russell, who was step for step. Great coverage and, and great use of the, uh, the angle that time by Quinnelly to knock the ball away for a well covered defender. Badly thrown ball as well. Check that. That was Russell. Excuse me. That was Devin Coles, who's had a solid day in the defensive backfield as the Spartans now force a third down and nine. Golot can't handle the snap. It's going to be dropped. And let's see who comes up with it. It's between Dixon and Golot. No matter what, it's going to be a loss on the play. And we'll see the punting unit come out for Morgan State quickly with 10.40 left to go here in the third quarter. And Deshaun Dixon... Just unfortunate there in that Powell area. On a knee, gets up slowly. But it's fourth down, and so he'll get a chance to jog to the sideline and cover and, and get himself together. Again, what a day for the defense of Norfolk State. Absolutely. It's something that um, we've been looking for all season, the turnovers. And we got four today on the defensive side. As Justin Smith stands at the Norfolk State 45-yard line, awaiting the punt from Nicholas O'Shea. He stands at his four. 
as the snap is good the punt is away and this one is in the direction of the Norfolk State sideline and it bounces and takes the Norfolk State bounce backwards and it's picked up by Morgan at the North at their own 43 yard line and a timeout will be taken on the field as the Spartans offensively will be back out on the field looking for their first first down of the third quarter leading 31 to nothing we'll take a digital break on the MEAC digital and the world's never gotten enough of it so we proudly bring you more of it the new 911 timeless machine We're back at Dick Price Stadium where the Spartans of Norfolk State leads the Bears of Morgan State now by a score of 31 to nothing. Ross Gordon, Wu Bay, Gabray. As Norfolk State again for the second time today will start in the third quarter on the Morgan State side of the field as the handoff goes to Smith. He retries the right side and he's hit hard as he picks up a yard. Still pushing his way forward. As there's still more pushing and shoving. At the conclusion of the play, it'll be a pickup of one. That'll make it a second down and nine for the Spartans. And coming up until that point, for Norfolk State, they had three yards in the third quarter, and Morgan had two yards in the third quarter. So neither team's offensively having any success here in the third quarter as the Spartans will have two wide receivers, one split to either side. Carter, play action, looking downfield, throws the ball, lobbing it in the air, and the pass is going to be broken up as Carter was hit hard as he got the pass away as Dunga was there to apply pressure on the backside of Carter as Ellington was the intended receiver down the field. That time Dunga got through the offensive line. He's had a couple penalties today, but that time he was able to give Carter a shot, and uh, Carter still looks like he's feeling it a little bit. Carter yet to complete a pass here in the quarter. Going into halftime, he was 11 of 15. Now 0 for 5 to start this third quarter. Now has a third down and 9. Carter drops back the pass. Pressure coming, steps up in the pocket. Carter looking out for Smith. Smith with the reception, picks up the first down as he snuck out of the backfield, and he was taken down after a pickup of about 10 for the first down on the stop was Maurice Lewis Jr. for Morgan State, but not before. The Spartans pick up another first. Carter now with four wideouts, three to the near side, one to the far. Smith stays in the backfield. First down and 10. Ball spotted at the 32-yard line as Smith gets the handoff running right side. Smith had one man to beat but couldn't do it as a nice tackle there in the open field by Rico Kennedy after pickup of about three on the play. Kennedy again, Ross. I haven't heard you call his name much leading the MEAC in tackles, but he's been quiet most of the day, maybe because of the Spartans' offense mixing it up and be, keeping him off his toes for the most part. It'll be, it'll be a second down and about six for the Spartans. Kennedy today with five tackles. McBurrow leads the team with nine as the Spartans have a second down, and we'll say seven with 8.28 left to go in the third quarter. Carter drops back. Hands it off to Smith. Smith with a hole over the right side. Stays on his feet. Picks up the first down and more inside the 20. Down to the 18-yard line. It'll be a first down. And Smith with another nice night running the football on the 12th attempt. He's over 7 yards. And the Spartans now have a first down and 10 at the Morgan 19. By the time he showed his, he showed his balance, getting through that line, taking a couple hits, staying on his feet and getting the first down. Carter with Smith to his left. Carter, play action, looking downfield, lobs it. Justin Smith was open, but Carter, a tad bit too much on the throw. And that'll bring up a second down. Maybe put some more air under that one, Ross. He, he, Smith beat his defender. And it uh, looks like uh, Carter maybe mistimed his, his throw and mistimed, and mis mistimed his uh, little miscommunication that time on the play. But if Carter would maybe put some more air under it, it could have been six. Second down for the Spartans. Second down and 10. Ball spotted at the 18-yard line. It'll be a second down for the Spartans as Carter sends two wide receivers to the near side. One to the far. Blitz comes as the handoff goes to Smith. Smith hit by the blitzer off the edge, and that's going to be a minimal game on second down. It'll bring up a third down and nine for the Spartans with 7.43 left to go here in quarter number three. In field goal range now for Josh Nardone, the junior, and he's ready on the sideline. If the Spartans can't pick up 
And we'll say 10 as they gave, gave him credit for uh, the original line of scrimmage. Not much more. As it's going to be a third down and 10. Carter in the shotgun as he drops back to pass with time. Looking left, looking over the middle field. Pass is complete to Justin Smith. Smith will be at the sticks for the first down. And it will be a first down for Dorfick State. It'll be a first down and goal now with 7-10 left to go here in quarter number three. It's a great job by Smith coming back to, to Carter on that comeback route. Great catch and great pass for the Spartans offense. The Spartans methodically moving down the field now as Carter sends three wide receivers to the far side, one to the near, Smith in the backfield. Play action, Carter looking in for Justin Smith. Throws it out of bounds. Good coverage on the outside there by the Bears. It'll bring up a second down and goal. Nice little visit here today in the booth for the second time this year from Kevin Talley. And now enshrined in the Norfolk State Hall of Fame, Kevin Talley. I know a Hall of Famer. Here, Kevin Talley, former linebacker at Norfolk State University. Nice to stop by. And his wife stopped by. I think she just uh, celebrated a birthday. So happy birthday uh, as well to Mrs. Talley. as she's here in the booth with us. Second down and goal. Carter drops back to pass. Looking in the middle of the infield for McElhaney for the score on the slant. And the Spartans get on the board here in the third quarter. That's the third touchdown pass of the night for Jawan Carter. And the Spartans now open up their lead. It's now a 37-0 lead with 6.45 left to go here in quarter number three at homecoming. That time, McElhaney in the slot had a, had a safety on him, and uh, that made it a lot hard, a lot easier for Carter to find him as he beat that safety and got a touchdown. As Josh Nardone comes on to attempt the extra point, the Spartans two for two on third downs on that drive. And they open up the lead now, 37-0. Is your score Nardone on to attempt the extra point? As the snap is high, but the kick is up and it's through. Nice job by Stuart Anderson of bringing in the snap by Jordan. And the Spartans now lead 38 to nothing here at homecoming. And we'll see again the Spartan defense has come out. And again, we mentioned Kevin Talley. He'll like this defensive effort by the Spartans. They've only given up 126 yards here today 56 on the ground 70 through the air by this Norfolk State defense again with the week off they come out and they look fresh here today you know and that was one of the keys Ross that you know coming off that loss down in Florida to Batum Cookman you, you you come in here and you get a week off it's homecoming it's festive it's exciting and you have Morgan coming to town you know made the trip from Baltimore and you and you, you see like I said you see how fresh the Spartans look today um you know all phases right now are playing really well on this homecoming day here in Norfolk. As Nardone will come out to kick off again, the Spartans will be on the road next week as they will travel to Raleigh, North Carolina to take on, excuse me, Durham, North Carolina to take on North Carolina Central. It will be Central's homecoming as Nardone gets this one away and retreating at the seven yard line was Cofield. Cofield gets to the 17 before he swallowed up by the Spartans defense. Nice coverage again by the kickoff unit for Norfolk State. And Morgan State, again, will start deep in their own territory. I talked about it earlier. You know, Galat has been playing most of the game for the most part at quarterback for the Bears. Well, not not having one of his best games, but it's just interesting that, that, that Coach Wheatley has not you know, changed up the quarterbacks and maybe given uh, the Spartans some different looks. He went with Galat the whole game. Go lot. Back onto the field. In the backfield is Williams. As the Spartans crowd the line of scrimmage again. Let's go lot. Play action. Drops back to pass. Pressure coming. Ricky Thomas back there. He's going to get hit. And Thomas is going to get the sack. See if it's Harden also back there. But Ricky Thomas Jr. We'll get this sack, and we're going to have a flag thrown. It's going to be against the Spartans. Leave sideline warning. Sideline warning. Norfolk State. That is their second sideline warning. And we're also going to have an injured player on the field. Might be cool. right. and again, that's the first sack for Norfolk State. Actually, yeah, it is the first sack. For the Spartans, that's 11-yard loss for Ricky Thomas. 
you know, no sacks, you know, one sack today, Ross, but the pressures have uh, provided a lot of problems for Morgan on offense. But, they, yeah, their first sack is, is, is we are looking for more sacks on that Sparks defense. Let's go lap. We'll try to off to the sideline. Good. Good to see him up. You wanted Harris, uh, and you got him. I got him. <laughs> As he comes to the sideline, Golak goes to the sideline. Harris, today, who's 2 of 5, he has an interception on the night. He has 12 yards as well, passing only 70 as a team. As the Bears now have a second down and 21 after the loss of 11. Harris comes in 6'4", 210. Golak, 6'3", 225. So both big, big size quarterbacks for the Bears. Harris. Will keep it as he tries the left side, picks up solid yardage, back past the original line of scrimmage, and he's taken down by Nyree Quinterly, and that's what we saw a lot of last year from DeAndre Harris as he picks up a big chunk of that 21 back. And it'll be a third down, and we'll say four, maybe three. We'll say four, and... Pickup of 17 on second down, and we'll see Harris with this third down and four. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. Harris awaits the snap, claps his hands, drops back. Pass is going to be complete. Manasseh Bailey picks up the first down, and he's going to be stopped by Nyree Quinterly, and the Bears will have the first. Again, with both quarterbacks, we're off the offenses. Don't, the offense does not change much. Still run the same sets with both quarterbacks. As Harris stays in it, quarterback. And he'll keep it on the quarterback draw. And he's going to be taken down nicely out in the open field. Nice job of avoiding the block by do all senior free safety and Bobby Price. And that makes it a second down and 11 as they're going to say he might have lost it. Second down. Harris drops the pass. Looking down. The pass is going to be dropped by Manasseh Bailey and almost intercepted by Nyree Quinterly as Bailey might have turned his head there as he thought he might have had some room to run, and he can't hold on to it. Yeah, he was definitely looking downfield. He saw the open area and was thinking downfield before he put before he secured the ball into his hands. And that ball was put on the money by Harris. But nevertheless, it's going to be a third down and 10. Harris with Williams to his right. Harris drops back the pass. Pass is going to be... Incomplete as it hit the ground. Bobby Price said he got his hands underneath it. But the official says, no, sir. And it will be a punting opportunity now for Morgan State. It'll be fourth down. The Spartans pleading their case to the referees that it was a catch. But uh, Morgan's going to punt. With 4.17 left to go in the third quarter. A lot of the fans on the Spartan sideline have made their way to the tailgating area with 417 left as the punt is away, and it's high, and it's short. Justin Smith again will call for a fair catch in traffic. Does a nice job of securing it at the 44-yard line, and the Spartans offensively will be back on the field. We'll see Jawan Carter again, who's had a solid day, 14 of 25. 289 yards, three touchdowns today. He also has a touchdown rushing as well. 20 touchdowns passing this year for... Actually, 19 touchdown passes for Jawan Carter. The Spartans as a team have 20 touchdown passes. One belongs to DeAndre Thomas. As the Spartans offensively look to keep the ball moving with 4.10 left to go in the third quarter Raquan Smith in the backfield to the left of Carter as Morgan State shows blitz as the handoff goes to Smith over the right side keeps his feet moving as he's hit hard as he passes the 45 yard line to the 48 
As an injured offensive lineman for the Spartans comes to the sideline. That's Jalen Powell. As the Spartans now have a second down and six. It's a nice hit there by Devin Hebron of Morgan. As the Spartans now have a second down and six, the ball resting at their own 48. You talked about Carter's touchdown passes today. I mean, the offensive line has given him so much time in that pocket to go down the field. Great job of the offensive line and Carter having plenty of time to go throw, make his throws. Carter with two wide receivers to the top of the formation as he keeps on the play action, looking downfield, has a man. That's McFarland. Such great hands for the tight end. He'll pick up the first down. Inside the 45, down to the 42. That time, Carter did a little rollout to buy some more time, and McFarlane completed his route. Great connection, Carter to McFarlane, for a first down for the Spartans. For McFarlane, that's his second reception, actually his third reception of the day, for 47 yards, and the Spartans now with another first. At the Morgan State 42, 250 left to go here in the third quarter. Carter with Smith in the backfield. To his left, he'll get the handoff. Running right, stops, cuts back, picks up maybe four inside the 40 down to the 39, and we have another injured Spartan. And this time on the ground is Justin Red. And Spartans have seen two offensive linemen go out here on this drive. Good thing is we see Jalen Powell back on his feet as Red will also get on his feet and walk to the sideline. Uh, Powell 6'3", 305, and Red 6'5", 320 were off on that offensive line. Both Hampton Crabbers, so uh, hopefully they'll be okay to get back into this one. Both of them jogging to the sideline as well, which is good. As Red is favoring his right shoulder. As the Spartans. Now with the second down and seven. 2.35 left to go here in quarter number three. 38 nothing. You score Norfolk State with the lead. Carter in the shotgun. Two wide receivers, one split to either side. As Smith gets a handoff running left. Gets a nice block from McFarland. Bounces outside and trips up over his own man's feet. And that's Marquis Ellington. If Ellington wasn't out there, uh, Smith might have been able to turn the corner there and pick up more yardage, but Rabbit picks up another first down for Norfolk State. He's up over 80 yards rushing tonight for the Spartans on 16 carries. Absolutely got on the outside, just couldn't keep his footing, but he had space and room. And Smith back into the backfield. Rickwan Smith only one touchdown this year rushing, but he's had two. Called back on penalties, one of those here today with 150 left to go. He's in the backfield on this first down and 10 at the Morgan 32. Carter drops back to pass with time, looks out in the flat. It's Smith for his second catch. Smith makes a man miss, still on his feet inside the 15. Actually, the 20 gets taken down near the 15-yard line at around the 17. And again, Rabbit doing a great job of making plays. Nice block on the outside there as well by McFarland. Well, that time he got a... You know, catching the ball out of the backfield, Ross. He can run. We know he can run, but his his ability to catch out the backfield and make people miss in the open field. Only a freshman from Holland Springs. 16 carries, 86 yards today. For Smith, that's his second reception. He also has 25 yards receiving. Spartans with the first down and 10 as Carter play action. Looking for McElhaney. He has him and just threw it too short. If you could have led McElhaney a little bit down the field, it would have been a touchdown. Just getting ready to say that with McElhaney's size, he could have shielded, shielded the, the defender. But a little off target that time from Carter going to McElhaney on the pass. 107 left to go in the third quarter. Carter tonight, 16 of 28 and four on the day. Three touchdowns, 314 yards passing. Picking up where he left off. Last year, over... 400, he had 457 last year against his Morgan defense. 314 today as Smith gets the handoff running right side. He's looking for a second 100-yard rushing game of the year. He picks up four on second down with a minute to go. It'll be a third down and a six for the Spartans inside the 15 down at the 13-yard line. Clock moving with 45 seconds to go. 
as the Spartans now have a third down and a six. Today, the Spartans have been really good on third down, five of nine. Tonight on third down efficiency, over 449 yards of total offense today as he sends three wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. Carter hands it off to Smith, running right side, and tries to escape a tackler. Can't do it. It will be a fourth down situation for Morgan and, excuse me, for the Spartans, and that's probably the last play of the third quarter. We'll flip the field, and when we come back, we'll see a field goal opportunity Coming from Josh Nardone with the Spartans leading 38-0 here on homecoming. We'll take a timeout as Norfolk State leads 38-0 over Morgan State as we move to the fourth quarter. You're watching MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network. and Bring you more of it. The new 911. Timeless machine. We're back at Dick Bryce Stadium as the Spartans lead 38-0. As we come back from the quarter break, it's going to be a 30-yard field goal attempt from the right hash for Josh Nardone. One for one today on field goal attempts out of the hold of Stuart Anderson, Dominique Jordan to snap. Good snap. Kick is down. Kick is away. Excuse me. The snap is down, and it is up and through. Two for two for Josh Nardone, and the Spartans now open up a 41-0 lead over Morgan State. With 14.56 left to go here in quarter number four, we'll take a timeout as the Spartans lead down 41-0 on the MEAC Digital NSU. Proudly bring you more of it. The new 911. Timeless machine. 41-0 your score. Norfolk State leading Morgan State here in Norfolk, Virginia at Dick Price Stadium as the Spartans get on the board with the second field goal of the day from Josh Nardone. And Nardone makes it a 41-0 ball game. And scores around the conference. Central knocked off Howard 28-6. And in a close one, A&T leads South Carolina State 22-20. As a fumble on the kickoff. And it's going to be recovered as it was kicked short. And Manassa Bailey comes up and recovers the football at around the 26-yard line. And that's where the Bears will start this drive. Also in... Early in the first, Florida A&M leading Delaware State 7-0. Again, the Spartans will travel to North Carolina Central next week, and Morgan State will host North Carolina A&T in a battle in a very important game in the conference standings. Both in North Carolina A&T and South Carolina State 5-2 overall, 3-1 and one in conference play. And after North Carolina A&T scored 22 unanswered, 10 unanswered by the Bulldogs and make it a two-point ball game. Late in the fourth there in Orangeburg. And we're going to have a timeout taken by Morgan State. Timeout. As Harris Morgan State. was State. late getting the play in. Getting the play into the team. As Actually, that's the first timeout we've seen all day here. A lot of action for Norfolk State. As, again, the Spartans, after the week off, has come out and offensively and defensively have really put the clamps down on Morgan State. Defense has only allowed 137 yards on 51 plays. The Spartans offensively have run 60 plays, 449 yards of total offense for Norfolk State. Jawan Carter, four total touchdowns, three through the air, one on the ground. And a good thing for Jawan, he hasn't had to run that much. Five carries, 16 yards, he has a touchdown. His longest was that 14-yard touchdown scamper. You know, you wonder, you know, sometimes it's, when you get that week off, you wonder how the rhythm will be. But Coach Scott, you know, just wanted those guys to get some some rest and, and get healthy for the rest of the season, this last stretch here. So it's like the week off definitely helped the Spartans. They look a lot fresher than they did uh, before that that bye week. Tyree Givers-Wilson has also played a solid game here today, missing the last two games with injury. I'm back on the field and looking healthy as Harris drops back the pass, looking downfield. Ball's going to be intercepted by Nyree Quinterly. Quinterly with the wall, has room to run at the 10. He cuts inside the 5, and he gets into the end zone for the score. Wow. For Morgan State, that's their fifth interception of the day. And the Spartans now take it back defensively, and they now lead 47-0 over Morgan State. Well, that time, Quinterly just does what he does best. Ross just... just taking great angles on the on the ball and he saw that all the way and it was a pick six 
Great play by Quillen, the, the senior from Norfolk. It was called first by Kevin Talley. He saw it coming. Great job by Quinterly. Came coming over from his free safety position and picking off the pass. For Harris, that's his second interception. And for Nyree Quinterly, he returned it 48 yards for the score. And the Spartans now lead 47-0 over the Bears of Morgan State. As we see Josh Nardone out to attempt the extra point. Snap is down. The kick is up. And it is high enough. It is up. And it is good. And the Spartans now lead 48-0 over Morgan with 14.43 left to go here in the fourth quarter. And again, that's the first turnover in the second half. Yes. But uh, again, these quarterbacks have seen man-to-man -man coverage on the outside, and they've tried to beat the Spartans deep um, pretty much on – Three of these five interceptions, two were blocked at the line of scrimmage. Two of them were blocked at the line of scrimmage, but the Spartans defensively have covered well down the field. It's only one play that they might have had a completion down the field that was overthrown for Bailey, but the Spartans defensively have been amazing here this afternoon. It's funny because Coach Wheatley for Morgan talked about beating your one-on-one -on -one battles, and the Spartans have done that um, on defense, done a great job of beating their one-on-one -on -one battles. That's how Quinley just read the play all the way. Jumped on the ball and got the interception. But you're right. You know, the, the corners, you know, with Devin Coles and, and Savage are doing a great job on those receivers. You know, limiting Bailey to under his average, the, the wide receiver from Morgan. So, uh, great job on the defensive end. And they're getting turnovers, something that we talked about all year, basically, for the Spartans defense. In the third quarter, only five yards of total offense for Morgan State, as we'll see another opportunity for Massa Bailey. He'll catch it at the... 26 yard line as and then he's taken down by McFarland and again the tight end for Norfolk State does a great job catching the ball for the Spartans but he's also been one of the best he's also been one of the best uh, gunners as well for the Spartans on special teams little pushing and shoving at the end of the play but things stopped and now we'll see the Morgan offense back out onto the field I believe it's Harris back out there for the Bears. And Parker in the backfield. And we're going to have a stoppage of play. Timeout. Norfolk State. As the Spartans take a timeout. As they didn't have everyone lined up there. There's a man short. And again. It was. I believe they thought it was going to be an illegal substitution. But the Spartans take the timeout and they're back out onto the field. And again, for the first year head coach in Tyrone Wheatley. A team that lost 24-12 last week to Florida A&M. Uh, again, a close loss to the the Rattlers last week, probably coming in with a little momentum. But again, they've just struggled to get anything going as the handoff goes to Williams. He runs right side. Not much doing there as he picks up three before he swallowed under. Nice pursuit again by the defensive line of Norfolk State. Myers there for the Spartans. Also... Coming off the pile for Norfolk State is Dixon. The defensive line coming to work today, uh, Ross. Doing a great job putting pressure on the quarterback and playing the running game. Stopping the running game as well. Didn't really realize it's 14 minutes to go here in the third quarter. One play. Uh, first play was a field goal as it's going to be a quarterback keeper and running to the outside and picking up enough yardage for the first down for the Bears was DeAndre Harris. As he picks up seven on the play, picks up a first down at the 44-yard line of Norfolk State. Excuse me, of Morgan State. You notice Harris, a lot more runs with him on the offense. As they won't go a lot, please. Bears send two wide receivers out to the far side, and the handoff again up the middle in between the tackles. For Parker, he keeps his feet moving out to the 50-yard line of pickup. Well, maybe they spot him at the 49, a pickup of... Five on the play. 
Nigel Chavis there on the stop for Norfolk State. Now 73 yards on the ground for the Bears. As the handoff goes this time to Lavelton Williams. He stopped at the line of scrimmage. Nice job there by the defensive line of making a play. At the line of scrimmage will be a third down and five for Morgan State. Williams will go to the bench and we'll see Andrew Howell, the running back. Check in. A 190-pound 5'7 freshman from Staten Island, New York, gets his turn on third down and six. Harris in the shotgun drops back to pass. Looking downfield. Escapes one tackle and then throws it downfield in the area of Bobby Price. And the high jump and the long jumper does a good job of going over a bench and then hitting the rail and not flipping over it. And that'll be a fourth down situation now for the Bears. That time, uh, that time Harris just running out of room, nowhere to throw it, just trying to get something out of nothing on that play and wasn't able to hit his receiver. Great defense by the Spartans once again. As the Bears will punt again with 12.31 left to go here in the fourth quarter. And the Spartans a point away from their season high. The points today. As we'll see O'Shea out to punt again. This time it's short and we'll see another fair catch by Justin Smith at the 13-yard line. And that's where the Spartans will start this drive after this timeout with 12.26 left to go in quarter number four. The Spartans lead 48-0. We'll take a break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Network. 9 11. Timeless machine. Okay. We're back to live action here at Dick Price Stadium on first down. The handoff goes to. Raekwon Smith and Smith hit harder as he might have lost the yard on that play. Nice job making the stop by Gatlin. As he made the cut and the Spartans now. We have a second down and 11. Smith now 19 carries. 89 yards on the day. It's a second down and 11. Clock moving with 11.50 left to go here in quarter number four. This time Smith gets it running right side. Picks up solid yardage as he's taken down in the open field again this time by Gatling. But Smith over 90 yards now as he picks up five on second down. It'll be third down and long for the Spartans with 11.30 left to go here in the fourth quarter. One thing about Smith, only a freshman, Ross, but you can see he's a complete back. And uh, he's young, but he's still able to make plays in, in, in between the tackles outside and out, out of the backfield. As Carter again hands it off to Smith. Smith over the right side, dragging tacklers out to the 30-yard line. He'll have enough for the first down. Nice job there by Raekwon Smith, and he's near 100 yards today. You know, that time again, using his strength and speed, accelerating through the hole with defenders draped all over him. And Smith will have 100 yards as the Spartans now have a first down and 10 back-to-back 100-yard -back ball games for Raekwon Smith. 102 today for Raekwon as Johnson checks in. Now for the Spartans, Carter in the shotgun. He'll hand it off to Johnson running right side. Johnson cuts outside, stays on his feet, and then he's cleared out of bounds as he's hit hard that time by Dunga and Johnson gets up slowly and Buddy gets up. Nice job there by Johnson taking the hit by Dunga and bouncing up. That's a pickup of five on first down. It'll be second down and five. He stands to the left of Carter now with 10-15 left to go in quarter number four. Morgan showing blitz as again the handoff goes to Johnson in between the tackle, stays on his feet, gets out to the 39-yard line before he's taken down. A pickup of four for Kevin. And we'll see the Spartans now with a third down and one. It's going to be very exciting, Ross, to see the future of these young men, both freshmen, showing promise this year. Just when they get stronger and get more experience, they're going to be 
it's a, a, tr it's a tough time, a tough time to deal with. They're doing a great job this year as freshman running backs here on the Spartans. As Carter with the third down and one. We'll hand it again to Johnson running right side. Johnson looking for a hole, gets one, picks up the first down. Nice job of being patient there by Kevin. And the Spartans now have a first down at the 42-yard line. We see a first down rushing from Kevin Johnson and Smith. And Smith back out onto the field now for Norfolk State. And the Spartans using the clock nicely with 8.50 left to go here in fourth in the fourth quarter. Smith back into the game at tailback. And he'll get the handoff this time running left side. Big hole. Picks up the first. Picks up nine yards on first down to the 49 of Morgan. And it'll be a second down and one. So. Spartans with the second down and one. Ball at the 49-yard line of Morgan State. As the Spartans send Talbert in motion. Ten on the play clock. Smith stays in at tailback. As the handoff again goes to Smith running left side. Near the line of near the first down marker, and they'll give him credit to the first down marker as we check in on the Bulldogs and Aggies with 116. North Carolina AT taking a knee in that ball game, leading by two, 22 to 20. So, Morgan State. Defensively has seen the Spartans now start to chew up yards on the ground. And North Carolina a t will leave Orangeburg with a two-point victory there as the clock moving under 45 seconds in that ball game. As the handoff this time goes to Raekwon Smith on the outside. It's going to be a flag thrown. And Smith on his way to the end zone. And for the third time this year, he gets into the end zone. But we'll see what the flag is going to be thrown for. As the flag is going to be thrown at the 47 yard line. Holding offense, number 25, 10 yard penalty, spot of the foul. Jermaine Talbert, the guilty party there, as the ball flag was thrown at the 43 yard line. And that will back the Spartans up 10 yards back to the 47 yard line. Flag was thrown by the field judge there on Tremaine Talbert on his block on the outside. As Kevin Johnson checks in for the second time today, a touchdown has been called back for Raquan Smith. And definitely, he, definitely see his ability though. He's a very fast and strong young man out of that backfield. And he comes to the sideline now. Kevin Johnson back into the ball game. First down and 15 as Johnson cuts back right side. Picks up two yards to the 49. Before he stopped up, it will be a second down for the Spartans in about 13. And great all-around game today on both sides of the ball, Ross, for the, for the Spartans. Defense caused turnovers. Carter going down the field. Running backs played well. Tight ends got open. So, you know, you have to be happy if you're a Spartans fan. Also have to be happy for Coach, if you're Coach Scott, the way this drive is taken up now. 6.28 left to go here in quarter number four. It's a second down and 13 as Raekwon Smith gets the handoff. Running right side again. Looking for a hole. Gets taken down as he crosses the original line of scrimmage. To around the 46-yard line where it'll be a third down for the Spartans. Smith gets up a little slowly. But the Spartans not in a hurry here. As 
as the play clock down to 14. Third down and eight for Norfolk State. Rashawn Smith in the backfield beside Juwan Carter. Carter, again, will hand it off to Smith. Running right side, Smith will pick up another first down as he hurdles a defender. And he gets taken down at the 36-yard line. And Rabbit doing it again for the Spartans. Up over 100 yards and enough for a first down. Uh, let's see why they call him Rabbit because that was a <laughs> an athletic play there. And that's enough for a first down. And Rabbit will stay in. As the Spartans still with it with 5-11 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Leading 48 to nothing. As the Spartans have a first down and 10 at the Morgan State 36. Again, it's Smith. Same play. Same direction. Smith still on his feet. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Not much more. That'll be a second down and 10 for the Spartans. And Smith will come to the sideline looking a little gassed here. And we have an injured Spartan as well down. Offensive lineman on the knee. And again for the second time today coming to the sideline on his own power is Jalen Powell. It'll be a first, it'll be a second down and 10 for the Spartans as Kevin Johnson now in for Norfolk State. As this drive started with 12.26 left in the fourth quarter. 13 plays, 46 yards with 4.18 left to go now in the quarter. This is now moving to an eight-minute drive for Norfolk State as a handoff. Actually, it's a quarterback keeper and it's Jawan Carter. Carter will slide down. After a pickup of about four on the play to the 33-yard line, they'll bring up a third down and seven for Norfolk State, and maybe even four down territory just to keep the clock moving here with 3.45 left to go here in quarter number four. Yeah, we haven't seen much of that today. We haven't had to, you know, with Carter, uh, with the passing game and the running game working in the backfield. Carter hasn't had opportunities to run that's Carter two wide receivers one split to either side keep Kevin Johnson in the backfield and Kevin will get the handoff running left side this time tries to bounce it outside and does try to get chased down from behind but he will get enough for the first down and we'll have another injured Spartan is McFarland but he gets up under his own power and it looks like he will have Looked like he got enough for the first down, but they're going to mark him down maybe an inch short of the first down. As Johnson with the, with the carry now has 47 yards on the ground on 13 carries to go along with the score. As Carter will take it again, pick up the first down, and he'll get down. At the 20 yard line with 253 left to go here in the fourth quarter. And again, this might be one of the most impressive drives that we've ever seen here for Norfolk State this year. This drive again started with 1226 left to go in the fourth quarter. And 16 plays and 62 yards later, the Spartans have a first down in the red zone now for Morgan State as. Quan Smith in the backfield. Carter awaits the snap, and he'll give it to Smith. In between the tackles, Smith taken down as he crosses the 20 to the 18-yard line with 2.10 left to go here in the fourth quarter. I agree, Ross. In, in terms of time of possession, I the Spartans have definitely eaten some clock up on this drive with the running game with Carter, Smith, and Johnson. And it's going to be really lopsided now. The Spartans had a 25-25, 22-09 advantage coming into this drive. But again, this drive has taken up well over 10 minutes of the fourth quarter now with 140 left to go. Carter 
with the play clock at 10. As Smith to his left, awaiting the snap. Again, the handoff goes to Smith in between the tackles. Again, Smith stays on his feet to the 10-yard line, driving tacklers inside the 10. It'll be a first down for the Spartans. It'll be a first down and goal at the 10-yard line. The clock will keep running, never stop. There in Smith now with a career-high 20 nine carries up over 140 yards today still no score has 165 yards of total offense here this afternoon under a minute to go first down and goal for the spartans the smith to the left of carter handoff goes to smith in between the tackles he gets back to the 10 but that's about it and spartans will have to run one more play before this homecoming will be wrapped up with a shutout victory 48 to nothing over Morgan State and we'll see what the Spartans will do here and the Spartans will take a knee here to conclude things here today to in this ball game, it is a 48-0 win for Norfolk State over the Bears of Morgan here at homecoming. We'll take a timeout after this is a short discussion here. The Spartans win it 48 nothing. Wu Bay. What a what a day offensively and defensively for the Spartans. Yeah, great job, Ross, by both offense and defense. We caught we talked about it a little bit during the broadcast. Might have been their most uh, complete game on both sides of the ball. Five turnovers. Carter again having all the time in the world to go down the field running backs career career high in carries for uh smith johnson doing his thing in the backfield as well so a uh, great complete game for the uh, for the spartans today and one thing we can say before this game morgan state had only the most they've given up in a conference game was 31 points that was at bethune cookman uh, but today 48 points given up and the offense was clicking on all cylinders as well led by Jawan carter 16 of 28 314, three touchdowns, and also 142 yards rushing from Wayquan Smith. And, and 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 the defense as well, Ross. We we talked about it. How coach Coach Scott wanted more pressure, and that created turnovers. And that creates turnovers, and that's what they did today with two tap balls playing tip drill. That's why you do that in practice. You work on those drills, and uh, the Spartans were able to get turnovers and um, converting them into points. Five interceptions for the Spartans defensively. One of them returned for a touchdown here this afternoon as the Spartans win it 48 to nothing norfolk state improves to two and three in conference play three and six overall the aggies of north carolina a&t will travel to baltimore next weekend to take on morgan state that's their next opponent the spartans will travel down to dorm north carolina to take on north carolina central at two o'clock p.m so for wube gabray i'm ross gordon saying so long from dick price stadium where the final score is 48 to nothing norfolk state over morgan state all games airing on the espn networks are streaming live and archived on the espn app this has been a presentation of espn to our radio audience on hot 91 we'll be back with more on the post game show after this break on the nsu sports network